Good afternoon. I'd like to welcome you back to this town meeting. It was the afternoon session. And we're going to begin with subcommittee report F. This is coming to you live on Saturday, October 16. Mr. Canty moves to amend the votes taken at the 2021 Spring Annual Town Meeting under Article 7A, Subcommittee Report F, by increasing the amount appropriated for Plymouth Schools Line Number 63 by $1,605,585 as detailed in the Articles 2A and 2B Fiscal 2022 Budget Amendments Report. This is a majority vote. Uh, Mr. Canty is the chair of the Advisory and Finance Committee. Kevin Canty, on your motion. Uh, this would still fall under my prior comments under Article 2A. Thank you very much. And he did make comments earlier on. It's a majority vote. We don't see anybody in the queue. Uh, we're going to go to the vote. Uh, we're looking for the graphic for the vote under Subcommittee Report F. And once we have that vote, oh, I see Charles Votrain wishes to speak on the motion. So let's first, before we take a vote, let's bring in Mr. Votrain. He's from Precinct 4. He's a town meeting member. Uh, this is the afternoon session of the Plymouth Fall uh, Annual Town Meeting. Uh, it's coming to you live. Uh, Precinct 4, Charles Votrain uh, is looking to be recognized and brought in as a speaker. He is a town meeting member. Town meeting members can indicate through the V Voter platform uh, that they wish to be recognized. Uh, and he is with us now. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Votrain. Good afternoon, Steve. I hope you and all the members had a good lunch. Um, <laughs> this is interesting to me about having this in comparison to the firefighters contract because the, the teachers in this, this says school personnel. So it's not just teachers, I'm sure. It's 2% cost of living. Um, that's a reasonable percentage. And it, just as comparison, I don't think the firefighter one is. And having been an educator for like 33 years, while I'm on the topic, usually with them, if you had to take some kind of class or course or get a degree to change teaching the subject, you got a reimbursement, but it was never for the full amount. And it certainly didn't go year after year after year. It was only when you were in the school, when you got finished, we even had to bring our grades and submit them to the business office to actually get the slightly, well, the small reimbursement. So that's all I've got to say in this. I'm for it. I hope everybody else will pass this through. Um, and that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, and that is Mr. Charles Votrain, Precinct 4 on Subcommittee Report F. Are there further uh, discussion? If not, we're now going to go to the graphic uh, for the voting on Subcommittee F. Uh, it's before town meeting members. We're looking for the timer. Uh, the timer uh, will tell us 30 seconds, and when we run the clock, you can begin voting. Please vote now on subcommittee report F. Uh, this is coming to you live on October uh, 16. And uh, this is Plymouth Fall Annual Town Meeting, and uh, we will continue on the voting. And... Uh, once uh, we complete the voting, we will move on uh, to the next matter, uh, which would be Article 2B. And uh, the voting has ended. And now uh, we're going to see the results. Uh, 103 voting in favor, no 5, and 1 abstention. It carries. We're scrolling through uh, to see how town meeting members voted. And in the meantime, uh, while you look at that, I will read into the record uh, under Article 2B, uh, first subcommittee report G1. The water budget, Mr. Canty moves to amend the votes taken at the 2021 Spring Annual Town Meeting under Article 7B by decreasing the amount appropriated for water budget, water enterprise debt line number 69 by $102,426 as detailed in the Articles 2A and 2B Fiscal 2022 Budget Amendments Report. It's a majority vote. Uh, we've scrolled through the precincts. Kevin Canty, Chair of the Advisory and Finance Committee. Mark. 
Good afternoon, town meeting. As with Article 2A, you will be taking a few votes under Article 2B. However, my remarks here will cover the entirety of Article 2B, as that is how the Advisory and Finance Committee reviewed this particular article. With that out of the way, in a unanimous vote of 13 to 0 with no abstentions, the Advisory and Finance Committee recommends town meeting approve Article 2B. Approval of this article will decrease the fiscal year 22 water enterprise fund debt service, decrease the fiscal year 22 sewer enterprise fund debt service, and increase the fiscal year 22 airport enterprise fund as detailed in the materials. Thank you. Uh, we could have debate on this subcommittee report G1. Seeing none, we will go to the vote. We'll call up the graphic for the voting. Uh, you'll see a yes, a no, an abstention. We'll call the timer. Uh, the timer is showing uh, 30. And uh, when we, it can now vote. Town meeting members can vote uh, on subcommittee report G1. Uh, this is coming to you live from uh, October 16, 2021. Uh, we are in the afternoon session. Uh, town meeting members are voting on Subcommittee Report G1 under Article 2B. Uh, as we conclude the voting, uh, we'll be continuing on uh, in the warrant. The voting has ended. The poll has closed. 118 in favor, zero in opposition, zero abstentions. It passes unanimously. And as we scroll through the precincts, we'll read into the record Subcommittee Report G2. Mr. Canty moves to amend the votes taken at the 2021 Spring Annual Town Meeting under Article 7C by decreasing the amount appropriated for the sewer budget, sewer enterprise debt line 74 by $166,453 as detailed in the Articles 2A and 2B Fiscal 2022 Budget Amendments Report. It's a majority. It's a roll call. We've scrolled through the precincts. Uh, Mr. Canty, anything else you care to add at this time? No, thank you. Thank you. And we have no one seeking to speak. We'll now go to the vote on subcommittee report G2. Do you see the graphic? The timer is there. When the timer starts, you can vote now. You're voting on subcommittee report G2. This is Plymouth's annual fall town meeting. And we'll be continuing after this with subcommittee report G3. Uh, town meeting members have been moving uh, through the warrant throughout the day. Uh, we are now in the middle of our fifth hour of town meeting uh, on Saturday, October 16. Uh, and we're coming to you live on this day. And the subcommittee report G2 is completed. 116 in favor, no opposition, one abstentions, and the motion carries. And as we scroll through the precincts, for you to make sure your vote was correctly received and recorded, we'll read into the record subcommittee report G3, the airport budget. And Mr. Canty moves to amend the votes taken at the 2021 Spring Annual Town Meeting under Article 7E by increasing the amount appropriated for airport budget, personal services line 80 by 40,945 as detailed in Articles 2A, 2B, Fiscal 2022 Budget Amendments Report. A majority and a roll call, if it's not unanimous, we've heard from Mr. Canty on behalf of the Advisory and Finance Committee. There are no speakers. Uh, we do have one. Precinct 8, Catherine Holmes, is, uh, wishes to be recognized regarding a procedural motion. Uh, if we can bring in Catherine Holmes uh, on her procedural motion, and we are on... Uh, subcommittee report G3. Uh, so if we can bring in uh, Catherine Holmes. She's with Precinct 8. There she is. Catherine, if you can my, unmute my yourself. There you are. Go ahead and speak. Um, my vote didn't get recorded. I voted yes on that last article. You Thank voted you. yes. Thank you very much. Okay. And anyone further? If not, we're going to go to the vote on subcommittee report G3. Three. Subcommittee report G3. There's the graphic. There's the timer. When we start the timer, you can vote now. Please vote on subcommittee report 
G3. Um, as we continue uh, with uh, the voting on Subcommittee Report G3, uh, following the voting, we will continue to move on in the warrant to Article 3. Uh, town meeting are currently voting on Subcommittee Report G3. It's a majority vote. We're waiting. The poll has closed. Uh, 116 in favor, one in opposition, one abstention. The motion carries. And uh, we'll continue now uh, and read into the record the next motion while we look at the report of how people voted on that last motion. Mr. Canty moves the town appropriate the sum of uh, $21,550.08 by transferring $5,132.37 from the Community Preservation Act undesignated fund balance and by transferring $16,417.71 from free cash to pay certain unpaid bills of a prior year as follows. This is a four-fifths vote, uh, and uh, we will continue now to uh, determine if there's any discussion. We have people available to answer questions if necessary. We see no speakers. We're going to call up uh, <clears throat> the vote. Uh, on this uh, at this time with the graphic so you can vote. And uh, a one is a yes, a two is a no, three abstention. The timer is there, let's vote. Uh, and the timer is now working. And so town meeting members are voting on Article 3. And it is a four-fifths vote uh, for Article 3. And uh, we're continuing on uh, with the warrant uh, following this. We'll be moving to Article 4, A1 to A11. Uh, town meeting is continuing uh, through the warrant. We've completed now the voting for Article 3. And 119 in favor, zero no, zero abstentions. It carries unanimously. And as we move through the precincts to make sure your vote was received, uh, we're going to read into the record Article 4A1 to A11. Mr. Canty moves the town appropriate the sum of $2,761,849 to pay costs of various capital projects as shown provided in the chart, including all costs incidental or related thereto. And you have the language and text for the entire motion, and it's a majority vote. And Mr. Canty on Article 4, uh, A1 to A11. Do you care to be heard? Yes. <clears throat> so in regards to Article 4, the Advisory and Finance Committee took separate votes as to Article uh, Items 4A through, through A1 through A11, and then Item B1. So my immediate comments are going to be just about A1 to A11, and then I will separately uh, speak to you about our vote on B1. So with that in mind, in regards to Article 4, items A1 through A11, the Advisory and Finance Committee, in a unanimous vote of 14 to 0 with no abstentions, recommends town meeting approve Article 4, items A1 through A11, as detailed in the capital appropriations uh, chart that is included in your materials. Thank you. And uh, now we'll continue on uh, with a discussion under this article. Uh, and Robert Duggan has a point of order. If we can bring in Robert Duggan uh, with his point of order. And we are currently on Article 4, A1 to A11. We welcome Robert Duggan. Uh, to the afternoon session of Plymouth Town Meeting will be followed by a point of order from Charles Votrain. Uh, we're going to first bring in Mr. Duggan on a point of order. Uh, we're not seeing Mr. Duggan uh, currently, so uh, we're going to bring in uh, Charles Votrain, Precinct 4, and we'll be looking for Precinct 10, Mr. Duggan. Um, and we're going to bring in Charles Voigt train. We have two uh, requests for a point of order. 
And uh, I see Mr. Votrain coming in. Uh, Mr. Votrain, go ahead and speak. Yes, on Article 3, my vote wasn't counted. I voted yes. Thank you. And mm -hmm. uh, do we have Mr. Duggan yet? Yes. What? We do. Yes. We have Mr. Duggan. So uh, let's uh, go ahead and invite Mr. Duggan in on his point of order. Um, we are currently on Article 4, A1 to A11. And uh, this is the afternoon session of Plymouth Town Meeting. And Precinct 10, Robert Duggan has a point of order. And we've invited him uh, to join us. Uh, hold on, he's at the high school, so hold on. And he's at the high school, we're told. So there's a little bit of a delay. Uh, town meeting members uh, are currently uh, considering Articles 4A1 to A11. Uh, town meeting members are participating remotely uh, throughout the town uh, at their various residences. Uh, I also see a point of order from Jean Patnode Lane, and she's also at uh, Plymouth North High School. So uh, we do have people there at Plymouth North High School uh, assisting uh, the four town meeting members uh, who are at Plymouth North. Uh, they include Mr. Duggan and Ms. Patnode Lane. Lane. And uh, while we're waiting for them, um, we're going to bring in Precinct 11, Christopher Merrill, who wants to speak on the motion. So if we can bring in Chris Merrill while we're waiting uh, to bring in Mr. Duggan and Ms. Patnode Lane, uh, we'll bring in Chris Merrill, uh, who's going to speak on Article 4A1 uh, to A11. And uh, there is Chris Merrill. He's coming up. Uh, Chris, go ahead. Good afternoon, Mr. Moderator. I just have a question in regards to the Nathaniel Morton roof replacement and why it wasn't considered to uh, the Massachusetts School Building Authority. Thank you. And uh, with respect to that, uh, we can uh, bring in, uh, we have Brad Brothers uh, here. He's a school business manager. Good afternoon, Mr. Brothers. Good afternoon. Um, so just a quick answer to that. MSBA now requires a roof be 30 years or over. Um, unfortunately, the last replacement that we have estimated on Nathaniel Morton is about anywhere from 15 to 20 years, so would not meet the minimum age requirement for MSBA. Mr. Merrill, any further questions or comments? No further questions. I yelled back. Nope, I yelled back to the moderator. Thank you. Uh, again, uh, if we can uh, check to see whether or not we have uh, Mr. Duggan. Okay, we'll start with uh, Robert Duggan. Okay. Yeah, can you hear me, Mr. Moderator? Yes. Welcome. Good afternoon. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I just want to, my, on Article 3, Robert Duggan, Precinct 10, on Article 3, the last vote, my vote was yes. Thank you, Mr. Duggan. And uh, Gene Patton. I also... Under my point of order, I also just want to raise one issue that was brought up earlier that uh, some of these votes had to be recorded right away, which this one was. But there has been problems with the people from the high school at previous town meetings where we couldn't get through till there were two or three other votes taken. So I just want to point that out to you and to the town meeting members. We Thank appreciate you. that. Thank okay. you. And Jean Patno Lane. Good afternoon. Vote on three was also yes, and it didn't get recorded right away, so it didn't show up. Thank you. You see, that's on three. Thank the you very much. The last vote that we had. Yes. Thank you. And now we're going to go to Precinct 5. Uh, Michael Withington, who wants to speak on the motion. Uh, Mr. Withington. Michael Withington was with Precinct 5. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Withington. Good afternoon, <laughs> Mr. Moderator. Thank you very much for your, your uh, attention and time and hard work. Uh, just curious, what's the uh, shelf life or the uh, life expectancy of, of this roof that we're going to put on uh, Nathaniel Morton? Because uh, since it's a $2 million outlay, just like to know that. 
Thank you. Again, uh, Brad Brothers is the school business manager. Uh, he's here with us this afternoon uh, to respond to uh, Precinct 5 Michael Withington. Uh, Mr. Brothers. Yep. So the goal would be right around that 30 year mark. Um, you'll see as we go through the uh, future projects with the MSBA that'll be coming up for a vote, they're right around the 32 year mark. So with good annual uh, reoccurring maintenance plans, the goal will be anywhere from 30 to 35. Sometimes you get 40 out of them, but right in that 30 year mark would be the goal. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank yep. you. Uh, further discussion. If not, uh, we're going to go to the vote under Article 4, A1 to A11. Uh, this grouping is a majority vote. And uh, there's the graphic. We're going to look for the timer. Uh, the timer is going to be for 30 seconds. There we see it. As we count down, you'll be able to vote on Article 4, A1. Please vote now. You're voting on Article 4, A1 to A11. Following the vote, we will go to Article 4, B1. And uh, the quantum of vote for that uh, is different. It's a uh, two-thirds vote. It involves borrowing. And so uh, we're completing the vote on Article A4, A1 to A11, which is a majority vote. Uh, town meeting members are having the opportunity to complete the vote. And uh, we're now going to, at this time, uh, have the vote. 114 in favor, four in opposition, zero abstentions, the motion carries. And we're going to scroll through the precincts. And as we do, we're going to take up Article 4B1. Under Article 4B1, uh, Mr. Canty moves that the town appropriates the sum of $1,350,000 to pay costs of the Brook Road Bridge design and construction. And you have the text, uh, and we also have a motion to amend uh, which we will take up momentarily. Uh, but I'm going to go to Kevin Canty. He is chair of the Advisory and Finance Committee, Mr. Canty. In a vote of 12 to 1 with no abstentions, the Advisory and Finance Committee recommends town meeting approve Article 4, B1, the capital appropriation for the Brook Road Bridges design and construction. The current bridge, which is very old, is unsafe for vehicular traffic at this time and has been closed to all but foot traffic uh, for a bit now and will continue to be so until this work can be done. Uh, thank you, Kevin Canty. He is the chair of the Advisory and Finance Committee. And I'm also going to put into the record a motion to amend. David Peck, Precinct 4, moves to amend the main motion under Article 4B1 in its entirety to read as follows, that the town appropriates the sum of $300,000 to pay the costs of Brook Road bridge construction, planning, and design. The text of this motion to amend has been provided to you. It's been reviewed by town council, by me, and by bond council. Uh, therefore, uh, if we do uh, move forward with the motion to amend, uh, it will be this entire text. Uh, it's a majority. Uh, vote. And at this time, we're going to bring in uh, David Peck, who is the maker of the motion. There he is, Mr. Peck, on your motion. Go ahead. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Uh, this time I turned my camera on. Uh, I, I'm making this motion because ultimately I, I want to get this project to yes instead of getting it to no. Uh, I think, you know, with all of the research and all of the uh, emails and mailed uh, petitions there, I see a consensus that leaving the bridge permanently closed is unacceptable. And likewise, that rebuilding it so it is uh, safe in the 21st century and can carry our heavy fire trucks and buses and, and public safety. So we need a bridge uh, and we need a rebuilt bridge but there is heartfelt, sincere, thought out dis disagreement on which bridge. Uh, so since we, I understand that bridge construction could not happen until easements are granted and the definition of the easements cannot be finalized until the design is completed, 
that uh, and the easements will not be brought till uh, next till spring town meeting that we have time to refine fine tune uh, the design work with the neighbors and get to uh, a bridge that will meet uh, a degree of consensus. Uh, we also have thoughts that uh, whether it's to rebuild the existing one uh, somehow in place or restore it carefully in a historic way, there's, there's more design and planning to uh, happen. Uh, I don't want the project to stop. I want the design and planning to continue. Uh, so uh, I put this in to allow sufficient money for planning, uh, design and planning finalization of any related easements so that can be brought to springtown meeting don't stop the project in its tracks but keep it going in design and planning and construction will be discussed at uh, a future town meeting uh, and i also want to thank so many people have sent things in but in particular bill arienti paul levitt and greg hodges uh sent thoughtful you know well-reasoned suggestions uh again so we need more planning and design time. This amendment will allow sufficient money for planning to continue. Thank you. Thank you. And that is David Peck on the motion to amend. We'll be debating the motion to amend as well as the main motion. And the first vote that we take when debate is closed will be on the motion to amend. The motion to amend is a majority vote, but the main motion, as amended or not, will be a two-thirds vote. And uh, at this time, I'm going to call on Jonathan Beter. He is the director of the Department of Public Works. Mr. Beter. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. And uh, good afternoon, town meeting. Jonathan Beter, director of public works. Um, I guess that's a question for you, Mr. Moderator. Do you want me to address the, the requested um, motion to amend at this time or the overall article itself? Uh, Mr. Beter, uh, you are welcome to speak both to the motion to amend and the overall article. We have a list of uh, town meeting members who wish to be heard. Uh, you can also save uh, comments if you wish to listen to town meeting members and then respond. Perfect, thank you very much. So in regards to the amendment first, and I do have some prepared statements. Um, this came up at advisory and finance and we went over the pros and the cons, but mostly it was the negative in terms of why we wouldn't want to break out the engineering design. Mostly it, it comes down to we are very comfortable and content uh, where we are with design today. We have worked with the, the abutters. We have held a number of informational meetings to get to that point. Um, and as it, we go through debate today, I think everybody will have a clear and solid understanding of what this project is and why we're at where we are today. But first, I do want to thank a lot of town meeting reps um, for their interest in the project. I've received a number of phone calls, a number of emails from many of the, those who I've worked with for almost 10 years now. Um, this project has had a lot of attention. I know it's been, uh, a lot of you have spent a lot of time at the caucuses and, and there's still a lot of questions. So hopefully I'm gonna read this and it will help. The town engineer and our Sheila Skazi and I are here to answer any questions as you go through debate. We spent a lot of time, uh, money and effort on this project. So. The Brook Road project is a replacement bridge project that came before you previously and was not approved. Since that time, the bridge was closed for safety reasons and we have redesigned the project to limit impact on the abutters. This infrastructure project is being brought back for reasons of public safety. I can tell you that everything we have done complies with bridge design, minimum town standards, public safety requirements, and has included tremendous effort in working with the neighborhood. Again, you can find the project on pages 121 to 124 of your town meeting book. The total capital request is 1.35 million with an additional 500,000 from the Mass DOT as part of the small bridge grant. The original bridge design came before you in the spring of 2020 and it reflected two 11 foot travel lanes with a five and a half foot sidewalk. The overall impact uh, required eight permanent easements and had a 28,475 foot square foot overall easement area. After the springtime meeting, we went back and redesigned the bridge to minimize takings. That was, that was the request made to the DPW. We closed the bridge on July 7, 2021 for a variety of safety reasons. On August 11, 2021, we had an informational meeting and we presented five concepts. Those concepts are on page 123 of your book. 
We looked at all different widths. We looked at different types of designs, aesthetically thoughts that would really please uh, the abutters and really fit aesthetically into the neighborhood. During that meeting, uh, we left with a preferred option one, which was an 18 foot wide bridge with no sidewalk. At that time, it was an area of 14,648 square feet. That was the overall area of impact. And we would have needed six easements. After what we've heard from that August 11th meeting, we once again redesigned the bridge to really reduce impact because that's what we were asked to do. And we went from 14,648 square feet down to 7,561 and only four direct abutters were impacted. We held another informational meeting on Saturday, October, 20, October 2nd. It was difficult for us to schedule with PAC TV to have the hybrid meeting because there were a lot of meetings going on. That's why we had to have the meeting on Saturday. Here are the facts. Number one, the bridge is not registered as historic. Mass DOT dates the superstructure to 1926 and does not classify the bridge as historic. Number two, the existing bridge abutments and deck cannot be preserved. The granite blocks need to be removed in order to drive the piles. Essentially, nothing will be left to preserve at that point. As part of the final design, we will reuse the granite blocks and repurpose them into the bridge itself. Also, the soil conditions and stream flow fully necessitate full replacement of the bridge. Number three, we were required to construct a minimum travel width of 18 feet. The existing span of the bridge is 12 feet. The new design will provide an 18 foot clear span to minimize hydraulic restrictions of the stream. This is a requirement to comply with the Massachusetts stream crossing standards. <clears throat> Four, we have 26 miles of used and maintained roads in Plymouth. Used and maintained roads are those roads in the town that the town classifies and maintains as public ways, although no evidence of layout and acceptance can be found. The legal basis for this is the town's determination that these ways have been used by the public, which is the use, and maintained and used by the town, which is the maintenance, as public ways is a matter of right adverse to the record property owner for at least 20 continuous years, and thus have become public ways by operation of law. Proceeding from this legal conclusion, the town uses and maintains these ways for all purposes for which public ways may be used, reason why we are here recommending replacement of the bridge. A couple of past projects where we've done rehab work on use and maintain roads, Valley Road and Roxy Cahoon Road were used and maintained. The town laid these out and accepted these roadways as public in 2014. We acquired a 40 foot layout width. The eminent, eminent domain process, how we acquire our permanent easements, we've been doing this for a number of years now, was followed. 44 properties were affected. Only two property owners were paid for the takings all the other property owners donated required easements to upgrade the road. The second project is Billington C. Billington C was a used and maintained road. The town laid out and accepted the road as public in 2018. We acquired a 40 foot layout of the roadway. The eminent domain process was followed there as well. 35 affected properties, four of which were paid for their easement. All the other property owners donated the required easements for the town. Thank you, and again, the town engineer and I are happy to answer any questions, Mr. Moderator. I'm all set. Thank you. Uh, that's Jonathan Beter. He is the director of the Department of Public Works. At this time, we're going to move to Precinct 6, William Arienti, followed by Precinct 6, Edward Geller. Uh, we are debating both the main motion and the motion to amend under Article 4B1. Uh, the first vote, when we take a vote, will be on the motion to amend. Uh, we welcome uh, William Arienti uh, to town meeting. Uh, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Arienti. Good afternoon, Mr. Moderator. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak. Um, I have uh, one or two questions for um, Mr. Beter, and then I'd like to make a statement if I could. Um, the current um, design of the bridge, which you are, had mentioned, is that going to be a single lane or a two lane uh, traffic bridge? Mr. Beter, can you respond? That would be two lanes. Thank that you. Two be, lanes. That would be two lanes. Okay. Um, all right. Yes. All right. So first and foremost, the, the most important thing we have here is public safety and the accessibility for fire apparatus, police and EMS to be able to get to every single 
um, address on that street. And it's a responsibility of this town to ensure that the road is passable to all those addresses. Um, there's been delay in, in getting this um, working, and I don't think that we can afford to continue to delay uh, the bridge being built or repaired in any way. Um, during the frequent storms that we experience in this area of the country, it's very common for a tree to land on a um, uh, electrical lines, causing a fire and then also stopping any traffic from getting in. And with the br no bridge, we are leaving some houses to be basically uh, in extraordinary jeopardy with that. Um, the width of the current bridge um, has been sufficient for all these years. I understand that it has to be a little wider now due to um, uh, some of the, uh, the rules uh, of the Department of Transportation and so on. But um, I don't think that we do need a two lane bridge there. I was speaking to a number of the abutters and the homeowners in the area and they are, are all in agreement that you have a, a basically a one lane street going to a two lane bridge and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Um, the article that I, I believe that we have that we should pass this because the article before us only addresses the money issue. It doesn't address the design issue. But I would like to ask if Mr. Beto would be willing to um, sit and come to an agreement um, that is acceptable to all of the um, abutters and homeowners of that area um, before we seconds. go further. I believe that, um, I just believe that uh, any delay on this is going to be um, dangerous for the people who were there. And I would like to ask if we can get an agreement, a compromise with the town and these people to get something done immediately. Thank you. Mr. Arienti, that is outside the scope of the authority of town meeting. Our, our authority is for funding. Uh, so I'm not going to bring in Mr. Beter. I'm going to go to Edward Geller, Precinct 6. Uh, let's bring in Mr. Geller. Edward Geller is a town meeting member in Precinct 6. Uh, but meanwhile, Mr. Arienti, I know Mr. Beter heard your concerns uh, and so noted. Uh, I see Mr. Geller on the screen. Uh, if you can unmute yourself, Mr. Geller, uh, and you can uh, go forward and make your presentation, you need to turn on your microphone. It is currently off. Uh, so if you can uh, unmute yourself uh, so that we'll be able to hear you. Uh, in his precinct six, Edward Geller, you're unmuted. Go ahead and speak. Can you hear me now? Yes, welcome. Oh. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Ed Geller, Precinct 6. Regarding Article 4B1, I respectfully ask everyone to vote no on the main article and yes on the amendment that Mr. Peck just made, and I will explain. We have received several emails, letters, even a signed petition with a landslide opinion favoring the no vote to move forward. There has been only a few people that live on the street that are on the favorable side of what's being proposed. Our caucus meeting also was very lengthy in discussion as well here in Manamet, Precinct 6. The main motion will fund the proposal moving forward that we as town meeting members have received written in the main article. The motion to amend will give the opportunity to look at different funding sources, a chance to preserve history a chance to keep this calm country feel to the neighborhood, to reopen the currently closed road, and also a chance to reward a lot of hard work that people have put into this project so far, but yet most importantly, to repair the division that is between the residents that live on that street. The motion to amend, I think, is a lifelong resident amendment. We should get this opportunity to try to preserve some of the last small country feel that we are losing every day here as residents in Plymouth. Please vote no on Article 4B1 and yes on the motion to amend. Thank you. Thank you, and that's Edward Geller, Precinct 6. We now have a procedural motion to close debate from Precinct 11, Jeffrey DeLapp. Uh, and so we're gonna go to the motion to close debate. 
and show the queue. And in the queue, we see Mr. Pulsinelli, Mr. Siegel, Ms. Hall, Mr. Cohen, Mr. Bagley, Mr. Hammond, Mr. Coughlin. I also have uh, Ms. McCarthy as the next speaker, uh, if uh, depending on this uh, procedural motion. So it is a motion to close debate, and it is not debatable. Uh, we'll bring up the graphic on the procedural motion to close debate. This would be to close debate on the motion to amend. Uh, it would not close debate on the main motion, rather just on the motion to amend for Mr. Peck. 30 seconds are shown as soon as the clock winds down now. You can now vote on whether to close debate on the motion to amend. And the motion to amend is uh, a motion to appropriate $300,000 to pay costs of the Brook Road Bridge Construction Planning and Design and other pre-construction costs. That is the motion to amend. Uh, we're voting whether to close debate on the motion to amend. Uh, town meeting members have now completed the voting on whether to close debate on the motion to amend. 55 yes, 60 no, zero abstention. We're going to continue, and we're now going to continue with Precinct 5, Patricia McCarthy, followed by Precinct 6, Colleen Coughlin. We're debating uh, this article, and we're bringing in uh, Patricia McCarthy, Article 4B1. We have the motion to amend, and we also have the main motion. And uh, Patricia McCarthy is with Precinct 5. Uh, she'll be followed by Precinct 6, Colleen Coughlin. Uh, town meeting members are able to indicate uh, their interest in voting uh, or speaking by using the voter. Uh, Patricia McCarthy, we can see you. If you can unmute yourself, uh, you'll be able to begin speaking. And uh, Patricia McCarthy, go ahead and speak. You're unmuted. Yes, <clears throat> thank you. Um, I want to thank uh, JB and his team for all the information that we received, the 170 plus page report and all the other data. So I have a couple of questions and concerns. My questions would be, if this amendment passes, where would, um, where would that leave us? I mean, the amendment passes where does that leave us with regards to the grant monies and when it would have to come back, my understanding, to next spring then town meeting for funding for the whole project? When would be the earliest or projection of the um, project to start? Because now we were, um, we think it would be able to be started in the summer of 2022. So um, that was my main question. And um, where would be, how could any adjustments be made to all the concerns in terms of the actual replacement of the bridge or some people think it can be still repaired or something. Anyway, thank you. Thank you. Jonathan Beter, Director of Department of Public Works responding. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, that was our goal. We were hopeful to, to bid the project in the spring with a summer 22 start. However, if, if, we, if this amendment passes, and we just move forward with a, a redesign. I don't think there's a, a likelihood of us making Springtown meeting. And the reason is to go back and meet with whoever it is we need to meet to to redesign this and then permit it, it doesn't seem likely. I mean, we're already putting capital together for Springtown meeting now, and they're due the first week of November. So I don't think there's a, a good possibility of us making uh, the Springtown meeting. You're probably looking at a fall uh, 2022 date for this project. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, Patricia McCarthy, any more comments? Uh, no, I am in support of the main motion the way it stands. Thank you. Thank you. And now we're going to go to Precinct 6, uh, Colleen Coughlin, followed by Precinct 15, Richard Neely. Uh, Colleen Coughlin will bring in. Uh, <coughs> she is a town meeting member. And that will be followed by Precinct 15, Richard Neely. Uh, we are continuing uh, to debate uh, in the afternoon session. Uh, we are on Article 4B1. We have a motion to amend, and uh, we also have a main motion. Uh, we're waiting to bring in Precinct 6, Colleen Coughlin, uh, who is going to join us uh, through the 
uh, Zoom webinar video conferencing platform. And Colleen, we can see you. If you can unmute yourself uh, so we can hear you and there we can see your video. Uh, go ahead and speak. Hello. Hello, Colleen. Hello. I just also wanted to air, um, similar to Ed Geller, I had received quite a bit of outreach from folks that are directly affected by this. Um, this plan and the fact that they are very adamant that this is not a good fit for their area. Um, I definitely want to, um, again, outline that we'd like to support this amendment um, so we can really think about how this is going to affect, um, you know, the, the atmosphere of, of this neighborhood in this area. So thank you. Thank you. And that's uh, Precinct 6, Colleen Coughlin. We're going to go to Precinct 15, Richard Neely, followed by Precinct 7, Thomas Bagley. So we're going to welcome Richard Neely uh, into the conversation this afternoon uh, with town meeting members. Uh, these are all town meeting members who have not yet spoken at town meeting. So while I have a large queue and also one resident, uh, residents follow town meeting members. And right now I'm calling on all of the many town meeting members that are having their first opportunity uh, to speak at this town meeting. So we'd like to welcome uh, Richard Neely and we'll follow by welcoming Thomas Bagley. Uh, Richard Neely is in uh, Precinct 15, Thomas Bagley, Precinct 7. Uh, we're using, again, the Zoom webinar uh, video conferencing platform. Mr. Neely has now joined us. Mr. Neely, you can unmute yourself uh, so we can hear you. And uh, we want to welcome you this afternoon, and you're unmuted. Go ahead and speak, Mr. Neely. Thank you, Mr. Moderate. I appreciate the efforts on both the people in the neighborhood of this bridge, as well as the rather prolonged effort by the DPW to try and meet the requirements of some very vocal people. But when we get right down to it, this is the smallest bridge with the biggest design effort I have ever seen. I think it's time to move on, not begin another planning effort. The DPW has presented a number of viable options and it's getting to be, the bridge close is beginning to become historic for the duration of closure. I vote no on this amendment and let's go forward and build a useful bridge. Thank you. Thank you. And that is Precinct 15, Richard Neely. And we're now going to go to Precinct 7, Thomas Bagley. I see him on the screen, followed by Precinct 2, Maureen Renault. Uh, Thomas Bagley, welcome. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. I just wanted to say that I'm in favor of Mr. Peck's motion on the planning and the design here, uh, because if the proposed plan that's gonna be funded by this project is alternate one, and that is to be two lanes, and we've heard from the residents in, uh, uh, in, in mass that they're not interested in two lanes, then the planning and design um, seems like it's not in a comfortable place. Uh, and therefore we need to do something again. Um, and it seems that we were able to come up with all these interesting alternatives since the last town meeting in the spring through the conversations that happened over the summer. So I would uh, wonder and be curious to see why we would not be able to come back in the spring with a new design and in time for a spring town meeting um, uh, in the same relatively same amount of time frame. So I look at this as I'm in support of the planning and design so we get this right by the residents who have been very, very vocal on this project and the people who we represent. Um, and I also look at this just also in quickly comparison to what we see in A11, which was for the planning and design for the Bartlett Road Bridge, where we just did planning and design efforts for this one for that. Um, and I don't see, I'm curious, maybe there's an answer to it, but I, I compare these two and see how we can um, do planning and design for one, but fund the entire project all at once for the other one. Um, so again, just in favor of Mr. Peck's uh, motion, and I would be against this uh, against the main motion uh, as it would stand. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're gonna bring in now uh, Precinct 2 Maureen Renault, followed by Precinct 15 Michael Hanlon while we bring her in. Again, earlier it was mentioned in the meeting about that I disallowed some motions. Usually it's uh, requesting people put it in writing and help them with the language. There are a few cases where 
However, motions are outside the scope of the authority of town meeting. And one would be something uh, akin to what Mr. Begley was just mentioning about coming back at a future town meeting. One town meeting cannot bind the other. Uh, the 135 of town meeting members that are here today may not be the same town meeting uh, in the spring uh, due to resignation or other uh, changes. So uh, we can't bind the spring town meeting. But at this time, we're going to bring in uh, Christina uh, Renault. Welcome. If you could unmute yourself, uh, we can see you uh, on our panel now. You've been brought in. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. It's uh, actually, now, is it Maureen, but you're on Christina's? Is that it? Well, name Renault. Hello. Oh, uh, no, I think maybe you just said the wrong wrong name, Mr. Moderator. So me, I have uh, you in uh, on you. the speaker's queue as Maureen Renault as the as the town meeting member, and I'm seeing uh, on the graphic a Christina Renault. Uh, that's how the iPad or the device is named. Uh, are you town meeting member Maureen Renault? There we go. Maureen, okay, thank you. Hi, um, I want to echo what a lot of other people say about the... If you could speak up, Maureen, into your, into your microphone. Good afternoon. Hi, can you hear me better? Yes, that's great. Can you, can Thank you. you. Okay. So um, just briefly, I want to echo what a lot of other people said. There's a lot of passion on both sides of this argument. Um, I'm really swayed by the people that, that would be for this motion. Um, and I think it's time really that we stop putting more money and more time into the design that's probably never going to happen and work on this. That's all. Thank you. And that was Maureen Renault, and she is... Uh, tell me, member Precinct 2, and we're now going to go to Precinct 15, Michael Hanlon. would like to bring in Michael Hanlon and welcome him uh, to this afternoon session of town meeting. Uh, <coughs> Mr. Hanlon, good afternoon. Go ahead. You're recognized. Thank you, uh, Mr. Moderator. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to speak in favor of the main motion, whether it's amended or not. Uh, I'm very concerned that by delaying the project and, and voting for or approving just planning and design money, town meeting could come back in the spring after having spent $300,000 and and not approved the construction of the project. That would be a waste of time and money. So I'm in favor of moving it forward with the project as it's currently conceived. I think the Public Works Department is bent over backwards to accommodate the concerns of the neighbors and uh, has come up with a, a viable solution. It doesn't satisfy everybody, but uh, it, it's, it, you know, we've all gotten uh, emails from many people uh, supporting option one. So I'm in favor of moving forward with the uh, main motion, but not necessarily the amendment. But I would like to ask Mr. Beter, what would happen if the main motion doesn't pass whether it's amended or not. Jonathan Beter, uh, Director of Department of Public Works, responding to town meeting member Michael Hanlon. Mr. Beter. Yes, thank you, Mr. Moderator. If, if the main motion doesn't pass and nothing happens, we don't have any plans to move this project forward in any format at this time, um, as far as the DPW is concerned. I mean, we'd have to bring this back to the manager's office and the select board and have a discussion, but again, there are no plans to move this project forward. You know, given that, I do want to provide a little bit of background just to really round out that question and where we are. Um, again, a lot of the emails, some of the comments, it not being a good fit. I respect and appreciate all the comments and the process we're following in terms of funding a capital project like this. This is the least amount of impact that the residents are going to see for a bridge, any bridge replacement if we redesign it or not. This is the smallest footprint they're gonna see. And the reason is we still have to maintain that 18 foot width. That's a public safety requirement. So we need to provide a minimum of 18 feet curb to curb for public safety equipment. That's, there's no change in that, okay? What we presented to the abutters during the informational meeting on August 11th, we, provi we provided a one-way option. That one-way option was for all of Brook Road. It was still an 18-foot bridge. It included a sidewalk and a narrower striping section, so it was only one lane of travel. 
what's happening is there's a lot of interpretations out there in terms of AASHTO and UTCD uh, being made in terms of providing a two lane road with a one lane, one lane bridge with just some signage. It's not gonna work. There's site distance issues, there's ge geometry issues. MUTC, they make strong reference to a signal that's required, which is going to have an, more of an impact on the abutters. We have done everything we can to really mitigate and limit impact and provide a bridge that we think is aesthetically pleasing. If the amendment is passed where there's just $300,000 of design, we will work, we'll do what is necessary because that's what we're here for to facilitate these types of projects. But as your director, there's gonna be no change in the design. We've already spent, we've already spent, I'm sorry, everybody. We've already spent about $150,000 in design. That number will continue to go up. And at the end of the day, as I said, you can't preserve the bridge and you're not gonna get less of an impact. Could there be a couple of other options you do? But yeah, nothing significant. That's something we could do with the design now. But again, if you limit it to 300,000, at the end of the day, there's gonna be no change. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jonathan Beter. He is the director of the Department of Public Works. Uh, and uh, Mr. Uh, Hanlon, you're all set with your comments. That was uh, Michael Hanlon, uh, Precinct 15. And uh, this is the time of the meeting that I uh, most enjoy as moderator uh, because we have a main motion, we have a motion to amend, and I have four procedural requests pending, uh, which we'll take up for first. Uh, the first one is a point of order from Catherine Holmes, and she wants to know what is the motion. So the motion before you is first the motion to amend uh, presented by David Peck, and it is to appropriate the sum of 300000 And by the way, uh, let's bring in uh, Betsy Hall. Uh, she had a point of order, although I see she apparently has withdrawn it. So uh, unless, Betsy, you show up with your point of order, I assume you've resolved it. And so now I'm going to go to uh, a point of order. Betsy Hall is back. So Precinct 12, Betsy Hall, followed by three people are moving to close debate. I'll take the one that came in the earliest. Uh, four people are closing, moving to close debate. Uh, but we'll take in, uh, but let's do Betsy Hall first. There she is. Uh, welcome back, Betsy. Thank you, and thank you to everyone um, who has spoken. Uh, my point of order, Steve, I don't know if you will approve, but um, I understood you to say that at the beginning, we have one resident who would wish to speak. And um, that they cannot speak until after all of the town meeting members speak. And I'm wondering if I can make a motion for a town meeting to allow that resident to speak um, now. So uh, the answer is no. And this is the okay. reason. Um, I have four motions to close debate and they're gonna take priority. But I would just explain to you and to town meeting members uh, that uh, under town meeting rules that were previously adopted by a previous town meeting, uh, speaking priority is given to town meeting members before non-town meeting members. And so for that reason, I've been going uh, through the speaker list and following that town meeting rule. Uh, quite candidly, that's not a rule uh, that I support at the time, uh, nor that I continue to support, but that was adopted by town meeting, and so I do follow it. Uh, but at this time, I can't accept that because I have four other motions uh, that take precedence because they want to close debate. So uh, the first person. Thank you. Thank you. Precinct 13, Michael Landers. Uh, he moves to close debate. Uh, <clears throat> we can show the queue, but uh, let's remove the other people uh, who want to close debate. Ms. Dela Cruz, Mr. Neville, and Mr. O'Brien, uh, because they're not speakers in the queue. Uh, they just all wanted to close debate. So uh, there's your cue uh, shown on the screen. And now this is the motion to close debate on Mr. Peck's motion to amend. So we're going to show the graphic. And uh, once we show the graphic, 
town meeting members will be able to vote when we have a timer. So first, uh, closing debate. There it is, the graphic. Uh, the timer will be for 30 seconds. Uh, the timer can start to count. And town meeting members, you can vote now. You're voting on whether to close debate on Mr. Peck's motion to amend. And following this, uh, I will take up any other procedural motions, uh, depending on whether this uh, passes or not. Uh, this is a motion to close debate. It is not debatable. It is a two-thirds vote. Uh, town meeting members are deciding whether to close debate on the motion to amend for Mr. Peck. The voting has ended. The polling results, 78 say yes, 40 say no, zero abstentions. It does not pass, just short, a couple of votes, two votes. So we're going to continue. We're going to go to Precinct 10, uh, Brian Fitzgerald, uh, who wishes to be recognized as a speaker. So we'll continue with the speaker list. Uh, but first, we're going to go and scroll through the precincts to make sure that uh, your vote was properly recorded. Uh, we're on precincts 13, 14, and 15. Again, a lot of close votes uh, at today's town meeting within one or two votes on determining uh, how to proceed either procedurally or on a substantive vote in precincts 1, 2, and 3. Important for town meeting members uh, to register your vote. Uh, this time we have only 118. Earlier we had 126. So, uh, this time, let's bring in Precinct 10, Brian Fitzgerald. Uh, Brian, there he is. Welcome, Brian. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. And I would begin by thanking all the residents and uh, the residents of Plymouth who contacted myself and um, so many members of town meeting expressing your opinions and your thoughts. That, that's very useful for, as somebody who does not live too close to the neighborhood. Um, it seems to me that there is a desire amongst, mo I would say, most of town meeting and many residents to use this town meeting in a way that it cannot be used. That is to say, to create a one lane bridge along Brook Road. And we have just heard that by all appearances, that is not in the offing. That a one lane bridge along the small road is not something that, for technical reasons, I, fr I freely and frankly admit. I do not have the expertise to understand. For those reasons, such a bridge cannot be built. And it's for that reason that I'm going to vote no on the amendment and vote yes on this motion because there does need to be a bridge there. We've had two rounds of design. Whatever design is implemented, clearly many people will be unhappy. However, that does not change the need that there is a need for a bridge at that location. It does not change the fact that we have already put a lot of time and money into this effort with not much to show for it. And it doesn't change the fact that implementing this bridge is not going to create a great deal of change. Nobody's going down Brook Road to use this bridge. If you've been down there, Brook Road goes from one road back to the same road. There's not a historical concern. I'm a history teacher. I'm a history minor in, in university and there's no signage, there's no plaques, it's, it's a bridge. It certainly doesn't look historical. So I would like there to be a one lane bridge. It fits with the character of the neighborhood and I understand the residents saying that. But for reasons that I do not have the expertise, frankly, to question, it doesn't seem that's in the offing. But there is a need for a bridge there. That's why I'm voting no on this amendment. Let's not spend six figures to kick the can down the road to have this debate again at the next town meeting. Let's build this bridge. The residents need it, they deserve it. Vote no on the amendment, I ask, and vote to build this bridge. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'm going to bring in uh, Betsy Hall, Precinct 12, on uh, a procedural motion. Uh, Betsy, now that uh, the motion to close debate was not uh, passed, I am going to take your motion, and I'm going to frame it as a motion to suspend the town meeting rules regarding uh, speakers, uh, specifically, uh, that a resident speak uh, prior to a town meeting member. I would disclose that uh, the resident uh, who has requested uh, privileges to speak is not only a resident, but he is one of the uh, residents affected uh, by uh, the proposal under this. And so I'd like to bring in uh, Betsy Hall. 
uh, to speak on your motion uh, to suspend the rule. And uh, Betsy, this is a majority vote and it is debatable. Uh, so Betsy Hall, uh, if you want to uh, be heard on your motion to suspend the rule. Uh, Betsy Hall, if you can unmute yourself and uh, welcome back to town meeting. Yes, thank you. As this is a very passionate uh, issue for the, for residents, I think that um, hearing from residents would be beneficial at this time. Thank you. And uh, the resident uh, who has requested is Robert Freeland. Uh, he's on the phone, uh, but I'll still first take a vote. It'll be a majority vote. So it's going to be a motion uh, to suspend town meeting rule regarding speaker, a resident speaker. And uh, again, uh, we have town meeting rules that have been adopted, uh, which gives speaking priority uh, to town meeting members. Uh, this is a motion to suspend it uh, for this particular speaker, uh, who is Robert Freeland. Uh, he has followed the statutory requirements. He did contact uh, the town clerk at least 48 hours in advance. Uh, he was cleared by the town clerk as being certified as a citizen. Uh, and he then contacted me and we then issued credentials uh, for him to be able to call in uh, as a resident uh, to speak at this town meeting. Uh, we have coming before you a graphic on whether to vote to suspend the rule uh, regarding speakers. Uh, this a yes vote would allow Mr. Freeland uh, to speak. A no vote would move on to the next town meeting speaker, which is Precinct 15, Eric Hess. So we're going to be moving forward first on this procedural vote to suspend uh, a town meeting rule uh, for this uh, particular purpose under this article and under this uh, motion uh, that we are debating. Uh, we're debating uh, a motion to amend from David Peck as well as the main motion. And when we next close debate, we'll be first voting on Mr. Peck's uh, motion to amend. Uh, this is all coming to you uh, live on uh, October 16. Uh, Saturday, we begin uh, at 8 a.m. We're closing in uh, in our second hour uh, in the afternoon. And uh, we're supported here by two representatives from OTI uh, Technologies. This is a new uh, motion for them that they are uh, preparing for us uh, to be able to vote. We're also supported uh, by a large staff uh, at PAC TV uh, with uh, Julie Thompson here in the studio. There's the, there's the vote, the graphic, suspending the rules. Uh, and you have yes, no, abstain. There's the timer. We can begin voting as the timer counts down. Vote now. You're voting as to whether to suspend the rule. Uh, it's a majority vote. Uh, a yes vote will allow Mr. Freeland to speak at this time. A no vote will move on uh, to the list of town meeting members who have requested uh, speaking uh, recognition and privileges. Uh, town meeting members uh, have been voting throughout the day on both procedural motions as well as substantive motions. Uh, we have quite a record today. Uh, that concludes the voting. The polls are closed. We'll now have the results on 97 say yes, 20 say no, two abstentions. The motion carries. And as we go through uh, the list, uh, Mr. Freeland will now come through. He's not coming through on video, just on the call. We'll bring him in now as we're uh, scrolling through. So we'd like to welcome Robert Freeland. Uh, he is a Plymouth resident. Uh, and Mr. Freeland, uh, you're welcome uh, to uh, speak to us regarding Article 4B1 on both the motion to amend as well as on the main motion. Mr. Freeland, welcome. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Robert Freeland, and I live at 60 Brook Road. I am one of the four property owners that the town wants to take our property by eminent domain and replace our one-lane, 250-year-old bridge and build a new two-lane bridge. If you are wondering how the other three property owners feel, that question can easily be answered by the signs that they have placed in front of their homes asking you, town meeting members, to vote no. Brook Road is a 370-year-old private roadway, making it one of the oldest in South Plymouth. It has never been laid out or taken by the town. 
the current bridge has played a significant role, not only in our town's history, but in our nation's history as well. Having no I understand that we're working on uh, Mr. Freeland's audio. Uh, he's oh. coming in on a phone call. Uh, he's been issued a number. Mr. Freeland? Yes, can you hear uh, me now? Go ahead, Mr. Freeland, if you can start again, go ahead. Okay, you can hear me now, okay? Yes, that's excellent. Oh. All right. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Robert Freeland, and I live at 60 Brook Road. I am one of the four property owners that the town wants to take our property by eminent domain and replace our one-lane, 250-year-old bridge and build a new two-lane bridge. If you are wondering how the other three property owners truly feel, that question can easily be answered by the signs they have placed in front of their homes, asking you, town meeting members, to vote no. Brook Road is a 370-year-old private road. Uh, Mr. Freeland, I'm sorry. We're going to ask you to start one more time. Uh, apparently, uh, town meeting members could hear you, but it was difficult uh, to hear. We're hearing you loud and clear uh, here in the studio, but we're trying to uh, work on the volume uh, okay. of, of your call uh, since you're coming in on a different line. Uh, for those of you watching uh, on PAC TV, um, you could hear uh, Mr. Freeland, and uh, we're coming to you live uh, on Saturday, October 16. Uh, this is the first session of the fall 2021 uh, Plymouth Town Meeting. Uh, we are going through the warrant. Uh, we began with Article 29. We then moved back chronologically, and we're up to Article 4B1, and we have a total of 30 articles. And town meeting will continue uh, to debate uh, the articles on the warrant uh, throughout the afternoon uh, until such time. And Mr. Freeland, go ahead and talk. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Robert uh, Freeland. We're still not hearing uh, Mr. Freeland. So in any event, uh, apparently town meeting can hear him. So we're going to... I thought if I were to try this. We're gonna, Mr. Freeland, go, keep, go ahead and speak. Hello? You can be heard, Mr. Freeland. Okay. Oh, okay, thank you. Is that better? Yes, we can hear you over the, over the Zoom. Okay, uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Robert Freeland, and I live at 60 Brook Road. I am one of the four property owners that the town wants to take our property you by you. eminent domain and replace our one lane 250-year-old bridge and build a new two-lane bridge. If you are wondering how the other three property owners truly feel, that question can easily be answered by the signs that they have placed in front of their homes, asking you, town meeting members, to vote no. Brook Road is a 370-year-old roadway, making it one of the oldest roads in South Plymouth that has never been laid out or taken by the town of Plymouth. The current bridge has played a significant role not only in our town's history, but in our nation's history as well, having a role in both our Revolutionary War as headquarters for the Manomet Militia and part of the Underground Railroad during the Civil War. Also, very much like the Pine Hills, which were designed and built with natural traffic calming features, such as narrow winding roads and a narrow bridge on Strong Bridge Road, Brook Road also has these natural traffic calming features, a narrow winding road, with a one-lane bridge. Taking away Brook Road's biggest natural calming feature, our one-lane bridge and building a two-lane bridge would lead to vehicles traveling at a higher rate of speed, which could lead to more accidents. There are several blind driveways here on Brook Road, as evidenced by the number of blind driveway signs, and putting those at greater risk to enjoy the Brook Road playground on a daily basis, such as area children, families, youth baseball, flag football, and those of us who have raised our children here and now share the joys of Brook Road with our grandchildren. In the last 11 years, the Brook Road Bridge has been inspected twice in 2010 by Churchill Engineering and just last year in August of 2020 by the Massachusetts Department of Transportation. In the Churchill's 2010 inspection of the five core categories, Churchill's give the deck a five, the superstructure a six, the substructure a four, the channel and channel protection a six, and traffic safety a four. A four is graded as poor, five is fair, six is satisfactory, and seven is good. In the executive summary, Churchill's 
makes seven recommendations for the for repairs to the bridge and gives an estimated cost of all seven repairs, totaling ninety thousand dollars. Of the second re- seven recommendations, the town chose to do three of them. The second inspection was the Massachusetts Department of Transportation 2020 inspection of the bridge, done just over a year ago. Of the five categories, the superstructure, a five, the substructure, a six, the channel and channel protection, a seven, and traffic safety, a seven. As you can see, the two categories that received a four in 2010 are now a six, the substructure, and a seven, traffic safety, in August of 2020. This is because the town chose to do some of those repairs, which brought the grading up in those two categories. I wonder if the town chose to do all seven repairs would have brought the grading up in all five categories. I feel it may be interesting to point out that in Churchill's executive summary, he also gives an estimate of the cost of a new bridge, $1,820,000, roughly the same price the DPW estimates it would cost today for a new bridge. If we take the total cost of all 2010 estimated repairs and did them every year for the next 20 years, it would still not equal the cost of bridge replacement today. Those of us who have contacted you over the last couple of weeks and have asked you to vote no today believe that there are other options that have not been thoroughly, thoroughly explored by the town, such as to repair or preserve our current bridge or a new one-lane bridge without the need of traffic lights with sensors on both sides of the bridge. That's just to name a couple. I, too, join many of my fellow neighbors and ask you, town meeting members, to vote no today because I believe there is ways to compromise and move this project forward, as we have suggested several times over the last year, but to date have not been taken up on any of our offers by the DPW or the engineering department. We as stewards of today must do what we can to preserve as often as we can these treasures of the past when possible, and if not possible, incorporate into our new structures. Yeah, as Mr. Freeland, you've personal. exceeded the speaking time. And uh, how much more time do you need, Mr. Freeland? 15 seconds. All right, if there are no objections, uh, Mr. Freeland, uh, finish up. Thank you. As much of the original as we can, which make make it eligible for other preservation funding sources. In closing, over the last couple of weeks, I've grown a great respect for what you folks do here. I have witnessed the time and energy that you put into this process. And for this, I say thank you. I also thank you for your time and consideration today. Please vote no. That's Robert Freeland, and he is a resident uh, in the town of Plymouth. We're now going to go back. Uh, I have a procedural motion uh, to close debate. Uh, Precinct 11, Christopher Merrill moves to close debate. This would be on the motion to amend from Mr. Peck. Uh, We'll show the queue. We have a number of town meeting members uh, still in the queue. Uh, Town meeting can vote as to whether to close debate on the motion to amend. We're going to show the graphic to town meeting members. And this is a procedural motion. It's not debatable. Uh, town meeting members will decide whether or not to close debate on the motion to amend, uh, which was to appropriate $300,000. There's the graphic on the motion. We're going to look for the timer. The timer is up. When the timer starts to move, you can vote now. Your voting now as to whether to close debate is not debatable. It is a two-thirds vote. We're voting on Article 4B1, the motion to amend uh, to appropriate $300,000. Town meeting member, uh, town meeting has now uh, nearly completed its uh, sixth hour. Uh, We began at 8 a.m. this morning. Uh, We are closing in on the 2 o'clock hour, and we will continue uh, throughout the afternoon until such time as we complete our business with a motion to dissolve or a motion to adjourn. Uh, Town meeting has completed the voting. 88 say yes, 34 say no, zero abstentions. The motion carries. We're going to scroll through the precincts. That means debate is closed on the motion to amend. Following the scrolling through the precincts, we will then take a vote on the motion to amend, and then we will continue debate on the main motion as amended or not, absent another motion to close debate. So at this time, uh, we've gone through all the precincts, and now town meeting members are going to see a graphic on the motion to amend. This is not going to be a procedural motion. It's going to be a substantive motion now on whether or not 
to approve or disapprove Mr. Peck's motion to amend uh, for the $300,000 in costs uh, for the Brook Road Bridge construction, planning, and design. There's the graphic. We're looking for the timer. 30 seconds, and now when it starts, you can vote. Vote now. This is on the motion to amend. This was presented by town meeting member David Peck. Town meeting members are voting on a motion to amend under Article 4B1. Uh, this is coming to you live on Saturday, October 16. Uh, town meeting members are participating remotely under uh, Massachusetts General Laws, uh, Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021. Uh, uh, your voting is ending now. The poll is closed. We'll look for the results. The results on the motion to amend, it's a majority vote on the motion to amend. 51 yes, 73 no, zero abstentions. The motion does not carry. And so now uh, we're going to scroll through the precincts. And as we scroll through the precincts, we'll be going back to the main motion. I will go to the speaker list, uh, which I don't have one right now. Uh, one is coming in uh, unless I receive a procedural motion. We're seeing precincts 13, 14, and 15. And now precincts 1, 2, and 3. And that's on the motion to amend, uh, which failed. Uh, I now have Precinct 15, Michael Hanlon moves to close debate. This is a procedural motion. Uh, it is not debatable. I do have one speaker in the queue. That's Betsy Hall. And so we're going to move now. I actually have two speakers, Mr. Pulsinelli and Betsy Hall. We're going to move now on the procedural motion to close debate on the main motion. A few other people uh, coming up in the queue, Catherine Holmes, Eric Hess. So it's a motion to close debate on the main motion. It requires a two-thirds vote. Uh, we're looking for the graphic on whether to close debate now on the main motion. There's the graphic. We're looking for the timer. It's 4B1. There's your 30 seconds. When the clock begins, you're going to vote on the main motion. Please vote. You're voting on the main motion on 4B1. It's for $1,350,000. And... Uh, it is a two-thirds vote that is required in order to approve the borrowing under this article. Town meeting members have been, uh, again, proceeding. Uh, we're completing our sixth hour of town meeting. Uh, following, uh, we will uh, take up a couple of points of order. Uh, but the voting has ended, and we'll now see the vote. Uh, 70 voted in favor, 50 in opposition, no abstentions. It does not carry by two-thirds. It fails. We're going to go through the precincts. And as we do, uh, we're going to take up uh, points of order from Precinct 5, Michael Withington, Precinct 8, Therese Brennan. Uh, so we'll bring in uh, Mr. Withington as we uh, go through, uh, scroll the precincts. Uh, we'll just hear his audio. Uh, Mr. Withington, go ahead. Thank you, uh, Mr. Moderator. It says to close debate. That's just what we voted on there, correct? Just to close debate, because that's right. It, right. So we just voted on to close debate, not the main motion. That is correct. Is what I, what I can say. Right. So, okay, thank you. That's right. And uh, Therese Brennan, Precinct 8. I'm I'm sorry, Mr. Moderator, I was just cut off there for a second. I missed what Mr. Withington said. Uh, he just um, asked that if was we, just vote mo we just voted to close debate. Okay, my question was the same. I thought we were... And, and again, uh, the... it did not carry. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So now uh, we're going to go back through uh, if there are any other speakers under uh, this article, uh, 4B1, and... Uh, I saw some speakers, uh, and I'm waiting uh, for them to come back in. I believe we had in Precinct 15 uh, Mr. Hiss who wished to speak, so let's bring him in. Uh, he has not spoken uh, yet today at town meeting. It's Eric Hess. Eric Hess, Precinct 15. Uh, if we can bring in Mr. Hess uh, as a speaker, he's not yet spoken, uh, and he has requested uh, a couple times 
uh, the opportunity to speak. Uh, Eric Hess. Mr. Hess, good afternoon. Yes, hello. Can you hear me? Yes, go ahead. Hi. Uh, I would just like to say that uh, as it stands now, the Brook Road Bridge is closed to vehicular traffic, but there is <clears throat> uh, ways to get in there through either the north end or the south end. And if this two-lane bridge is constructed, then Brook Road becomes a almost bypass for State Road, where their street that normally would hold somewhere around 100 cars could easily get upwards of 1,000 as people cut uh, off of State Road and use their their quiet street as a through road. And so for those reasons, I'm going to be voting no. And I would ask my other fellow town meeting members to also vote no on it for that reason. Thank you. Thank you. And now we're going to go to Precinct 1, Mark Pulsinelli. Uh, we're now going to start going through people that have voted, that have spoken at least once uh, at town meeting. Uh, Precinct 1, Mark Pulsinelli. Um, as we watch uh, the speaker's queue for those people uh, who wish to be heard. Um, we are debating Article 4B1 in the afternoon session. We just began our seventh hour. And so uh, we're going to continue. Uh, he'll be followed by Precinct 15, Kevin Joyce. Uh, and currently we see Mr. Pulsinelli. Uh, you're on the screen. If you can unmute yourself. Uh, and uh, unmute, go ahead and speak. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Um, I'm Mark Pulsinelli, Precinct 1. Um, I will be voting yes on this article um, for a few reasons. Now, we all have received communications from uh, many residents who want us to vote no. And the reasons they've provided that they wanted us to vote no are, or I should say the main reasons that I've seen are two. One is they don't want the bridge to be replaced. They want the bridge to be repaired and preserved as is. And number two, they would like a um, one lane bridge as opposed to a two lane bridge. Now, we have heard from our director of uh, uh, DPW. If you watched any of the public hearings, we've also heard from our town engineer. And what they're telling us is that those two items that they're requesting are simply not possible. I have, uh, as many other people do, have safety concerns with the fact that the bridge is shut down. Uh, it, you know, increases time to get an ambulance in and out and fire truck, same thing. Um, so for those reasons, I, I need to defer to the judgment of our director of DPW on the feasibility of what the residents are requesting. And if they, if our director is telling us that it's simply not possible, unfortunately, you know, I feel that we need to move forward with the current proposal. Uh, as it seems to be the best possible proposal. And to me, uh, leaving the bridge closed down is simply not an option because it it, uh, it does not adhere to public safety. Uh, and I'd, I'd encourage others to uh, consider that viewpoint as well. Thank you very much, Mr. Moderator. Yes, uh, we're going to move to uh, our select board liaison, uh, Betty Cavaco. She's vice chair of the select board. I uh, welcome her back. Uh, to be further speaking in connection with this, uh, Betty Cavaco. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wall, moderator, and good afternoon to everyone again. So there are a couple things that I wanted to point out, and the speaker before me is exactly correct. Um, there is no other way. We are either going to have a bridge or not going to have a bridge. And some of the things that I've researched and found out is that if this actually fails, and the bridge does stay closed. That means that residents are going to have to do a little bit of work and have legal expense because that no longer can be Brook Road. There will have to be two different names. It'll be, have to be two different roads. And I think that the safety aspect of not having a through road is really one of the most important things we can, we can actually take away from this. Um, it, I don't see a lot of people. I am actually in Precinct 6, and I've lived here for over 50 years. People don't seek to travel down Brook Road. Um, the bridge is not going to be marked with, you know, lane striping that says it's two lanes um, to begin with. So I really think that town meeting should really consider it's to the point where it's either going to be a bridge or no bridge and closed. 
And I think that is even more detrimental to the area that is there now. With all the closings and everything that is there, barrels and signs, that's taking away from what that little neighborhood is. And although I feel, I know that the DPW has done an enormous amount of work. I mean, I am hoping that these people actually have a bridge and that their public safety is considered. Thank you. Thank you. And that's Betty Cavaco. She's vice chair of the Plymouth Select Board. We're going to go to Precinct 15, Kevin Joyce, followed by Precinct 5, Patricia McCarthy. Uh, we're going to welcome uh, Kevin Joyce uh, into uh, Plymouth Town Meeting. And uh, this will be Mr. Joyce's first uh, opportunity uh, to speak at this particular town meeting. Uh, Mr. Joyce uh, will be joining us um, on remotely uh, as all town meeting members are participating uh, remotely. And he's coming in, Mr. Joyce, if you can unmute yourself uh, so that we can hear you uh, as you speak. You're How's unmuted. That? Go ahead and talk. Um, thank you for allowing me to speak, uh, Mr. Moderator. I um, Let me first say that I'm in, totally in favor of a one-lane bridge on this road. Um, I find it appalling that the town decided to block this road when we just learned that the um, uh, examination of the bridge recently was rated a seven and very passable. So they did this, the town did this to really divide the people on Brook Road. This road and this bridge needs to be op reopened immediately, no matter what the vote is today. I'm voting against this because one of the money that we're going to spend taxpayers' money on, and two, we've learned today that we can solve the problem for a lot less money and still keep the quiet, sleepy little neighborhood continued that way. We need to open this bridge immediately. The residents of this road demand it and, and should get it open right away. Um, this bridge is safe. We've, we've realized that. We've finally got the real questions out there. And that we can sure up this bridge, do the necessary state requirements, keep it a one-lane road, and that will keep the traffic off of this road. This could easily become a bypass, in my opinion. Um, I'm, I'm voting absolutely no to this uh, article. Thank you. Thank you. Precinct 15, Kevin uh, Joyce, before I go to another speaker, I do now have two motions to close debate. I'll take the first one. Precinct 4, Carl Mason. Let's remove the second person from the queue. And we can remove Mr. Mason. And we can now show the queue as to those people remaining uh, who wanted to speak. Uh, this is not debatable. Uh, it is a procedural motion. It'll be to close debate on Article 4B1 on the main motion. It's a two-thirds vote. There's the graphic. We're waiting for the timer. Uh, when the timer shows uh, and when it starts to run, we'll start to vote. Town meeting can vote now. You're voting on the uh, whether to close debate on Article 4B1. Uh, this is uh, whether or not to continue with the speakers uh, who are in the queue or whether or not to move forward now to vote on the main substantive motion presented from the Advisory and Finance Committee uh, to appropriate the sum of 1,350,000. Uh, the voting uh, has now ended. The polls have closed. We'll wait for the results. Uh, 83 say yes, 37 say no. Uh, the motion carries. We have two thirds. Uh, we will go through uh, and show the precincts. Uh, but meanwhile, town meeting members can now get ready to vote on Article 4B1. And when we do finally take the vote, uh, it'll be a two-thirds vote that is required uh, for the borrowing. You're seeing precincts 13, 14, and 15, and we will go back and see precincts uh, 1, 2, and 3. And then uh, we can now show the graphic uh, for the main motion vote on Article 4B1. Uh, since we have now voted to close debate on Article 4B1, and uh, we're going to continue now. There's your motion for voting. We're looking for the time. 
30 seconds we now see, and we're now going to vote now. You're voting on Article 4B1. As originally moved uh, by the Advisory and Finance Committee, it is for $1,350,000. And uh, following uh, that, uh, we will move to Article 5. Uh, town meeting members are voting on Article 4B1. Uh, we are now in our uh, seventh hour of town meeting, uh, and the voting has concluded. The poll is closed. Uh, we're looking for the results. And uh, the results, uh, as shown from OTI uh, Technologies, uh, would be 46 say yes, 77 no, one abstention. It does not pass. Uh, we will scroll through the precincts. We will show uh, how people voted. And in the meantime, uh, while we scroll through, I will read into the record Article 5. Mr. Canty moves the town appropriate the sum of $9,200,000 to pay costs of the design, construction, equipping, and furnishing of a renovated fire station. Number 2 at San Vincent Street, West Plymouth, shown on Assessor's Maps 103, Lot 41A, including but not limited to site preparation, demolition, and all other costs incidental or related thereto, and that to meet this appropriation, the Treasurer with the approval of the Select Board is authorized to borrow said amount under and pursuant to Mass General Laws Chapter 44. You have the entire text. It is a two-thirds vote. And now we're going to go to Kevin Canty uh, to speak on the motion, Mr. Canty. In a unanimous vote of 13 to 0 with no abstentions, the Advisory and Finance Committee recommends town meeting approve Article 5. Approval of this article will allow for the extensive renovations needed at West Plymouth Fire Station No. 2 on Samoset Street. The existing living quarters there are uninhabitable and the firefighters are utilizing temporary trailers due to the discovery of asbestos and other harmful carcinogens in the current aging station. I have a motion to close debate. Precinct 15, Michael Hanlon moves to close debate. I'll show the queue. I have one person requesting to speak. Precinct 8, Mr. Cunningham. We're now going to go to the procedural motion to close debate on Article 5. Uh, town meeting members uh, will be given the opportunity to vote as to whether to close debate uh, on uh, this and uh, before I go forward on this, uh, I do have a point of order now from Mr. Hanlon. So uh, before we take that, let's bring in uh, Mr. Hanlon uh, since he's asking now for a point of order. Uh, Precinct 15, Michael Hanlon. Precinct 15, Michael Hanlon. We're going to bring him in. Uh, Mr. Hanlon, go ahead. Mr. Hanlon. I apologize, Mr. Moderator. I pushed the wrong button. I wanted to speak. I did not ask for a uh, vote to uh, close debate. Well, you I did ask the wrong for it, button. but you pressed the wrong button. But you did ask for it. Yeah. And your request is denied. My there apologies. are other people before you. But thank you. We'll put you in the queue. We're going to go to John Pinto, who moves to close debate. So again, uh, we're now going to go to Precinct 2. Uh, John Pinto, we don't need to bring him in, but we'll show the queue. Uh, that takes precedent over any of the other motions. Uh, so we're going to take the motion to close debate uh, first. You'll see in the queue we have uh, Mr. Cunningham, Mr. Barbieri, as well as Mr. Cohen wanting a procedural motion. We'll first take the motion to close debate. Then we'll go to Mr. Cohen, depending on whether the debate is closed. Uh, We'll close debate. There's the graphic. We're going to look for the timer. 30 seconds. When the timer starts to roll, you can vote now. You're voting whether to close debate on Article 5. Uh, Article 5 requires a two-thirds vote on the main motion, just as we have a two-thirds vote on the motion to close debate. Uh, town meeting uh, continues to move forward through the warrant. We're at Article 5. Uh, this is coming to you live on Saturday. October 16, uh, town meeting members are participating remotely. Uh, voting has closed on whether to close debate. We'll now look for the results. 58 say yes, 57 no, one abstention. It does not pass. We're going to go to 
Precinct 3, Bill Cohen. Uh, he indicates he has a procedural motion. Uh, Mr. Cohen, what is your procedural motion uh, that you wish to make at this time as we scroll through the precincts to see how people voted? Uh, we can bring in Mr. Cohen uh, and we can bring him in uh, on his audio. We can actually bring him in now on his video. So uh, we have a request from Mr. Cohen. Uh, Mr. Cohen, go ahead. Um, I'm not sure if this is a, a procedural vote. I just was desperately trying to get recognized for the last uh, article, couple of articles I've been trying to speak. Nicole has indicated that I shouldn't hit it more than once. I'm not. I don't know what the issue has been. I haven't been able to uh, have an opportunity to speak. I just yeah. want to go on record. I'm having yeah. difficulty yeah. And Mr. with Mr. Cohen, uh, you are in the queue. I did not call on you because you had spoken before. And everyone else was a new speaker, if you thought about it. I think Mr. Pulsinelli was the only one uh, that spoke a second time uh, at this town meeting on that last motion. But you were waiting along with everybody else. And uh, you'll wait again now because I've got other people who have not spoken. But thank you. Uh, we're going to go to Precinct 3, Richard Barbieri, who has not spoken yet at this town meeting. So uh, Precinct 3, Richard uh, Barbieri, welcome uh, to Plymouth Town Meeting. Uh, I'm giving you uh, recognition. Uh, this is your first time to speak uh, at today's town meeting. So uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, you'll be Zooming in, and we will uh, listen to what you have to tell us uh, in connection with uh, the article before us. And uh, this is Article 5, and it is to approve $9,200,000. Uh, we are uh, continuing... Uh, with uh, the warrant and moving through. And Mr. Barbieri is uh, a town meeting member in Precinct uh, 3. And I see him coming in now. Uh, welcome. Turn off your uh, mute and so we can hear you. Uh, you can unmute yourself, Mr. Uh, Barbieri, and uh, we'll be able to hear you uh, as we go forward uh, on this article and on the debate on this article. So there you are, go ahead and speak. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. When I read this article, I have a problem. Apparently we've put a new roof on this building about a year ago. And now if I read the supporting documentation, it says um, that we want to uh, demolish the living quarters and rebuild them. And I find that hard to, to, uh, to believe that we put a new roof on a section of a building that we want to demolish. Earlier, I had sent you a motion to amend, but apparently I sent it somewhere else. Um, so could I have somebody tell me why we put a new roof on the living quarters and now we want to demolish them? I thought the intent was to put the new roof on so we could uh, re re um, rebuild them. Uh, first, Mr. Barbieri, I apologize. I did not receive uh, a motion from you in the future uh, you can send them directly to me at fst at plymouthlaw.com. You can also send them uh, to the Secretary of the Advisory and Finance Committee, uh, Jeanette White. And uh, you've been receiving emails from her, and she can forward them to me. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, in response to your question, uh, Edward Bradley is the fire chief. Marlene McCollum is the assistant town manager. Uh, Marlene, do you care to respond? Yes, this is correct. We did put a new roof on the entire fire station in 2020. And um, we were hoping that we would be able to keep the employees in the building. They are still working out of the building. Um, we are still using the fire station. They're not sleeping in the building and um, the calls are coming into the temporary trailer and they are responding from the apparatus bay. But the, the new roof is in place. The vast majority majority of the roof will be reused and retained as part of this proposed motion. However, you are correct that the small house portion at the front of the site will be removed. Thank you for the Thank comments, you. Mr. Barberi. Mr. Moderator, can I uh, amend the motion at this time? Depends on what you want to move. Why don't you tell us? Okay, I would like to add to the motion that the living quarters shall not be demolished and shall be renovated instead of where I read in the supporting documentation 
they're going to be dem uh, demolished and rebuilt. Uh, we have, as town meeting, first of all, no is the answer. Uh, but second, uh, okay. we have authority to approve the borrowing. We're not going to be micromanaging what they're going to be doing. But more importantly, and this is probably a good teaching moment for town meeting, uh, this is an example of a motion where in most cases I probably cannot ever accept a motion to amend in advance because the borrowing motions have to go through approval of bond council. Bond council is not present at town meeting and there are very specific statutory requirements that need to be followed in order to make sure that the action that we take is correct. So first it's out of our authority, but second, uh, for all town meeting members, if you want to modify and amend an article involving borrowing authority, I need it in advance. Mr. Peck's motion was allowed because he got it to me in advance and we did provide it to bond council so that it could be approved. We actually changed the language to make it conform uh, to the requirements of bond council. So Mr. Barberi, I'm sorry uh, I cannot allow it uh, at this time uh, since it's uh, not in order, but thank you. Uh, That's fine, Mr. Moderator. I appreciate the comments. And uh, I just asked my other town meeting members to vote no, since we're gonna be tearing off of new roof and throwing it in the dumpster after we just put it on of years of leaking. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Barberi. And Mr. Barberi is in precinct three. And we're now gonna go to Wait. our list uh, of speakers. And we have uh, no speakers uh, who have not spoken at all at town meeting. So I'm gonna go back uh, to precinct six, uh, William Arienti, who has spoken once. Uh, Mr. Arienti, uh, actually, uh, we'll bring him in and then I've got another uh, new speaker. So uh, let's first go to William Arienti. Uh, he's at precinct six. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Arienti. Good afternoon, Mr. Moderator. Thank you again for allowing me this opportunity. Uh, I've been down at the fire station and um, number one, this needs to be immediately addressed. They, they do need to have the um, living quarters restructured. However, there's another issue there as well. Uh, currently in the trailer that they're living in, um, it's covered with a tarp because the firefighters have found that it is inundated with mold as well, which means that these people are now living in uh, in a quarters that um, is hazardous to their health. Uh, we really need to get this up and working and done, and get the money voted and get the um, get the construction done to give these people a, a reasonable place to live while they protect us. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Arienti. We're now going to move to Precinct Twelve. Edward Russell. He's a first time uh, town meeting speaker at this session of town meeting. I'd like to welcome uh, Precinct 12, Edward Russell, uh, who's speaking on Article 5. Uh, Article 5, when we vote on the main motion, it's a two-thirds vote uh, due to the borrowing uh, that's required. Uh, town meeting is continuing uh, to debate uh, Article 5 as we go through the warrant uh, for the town meeting. Uh, we welcome uh, Edward Russell. Uh, he is with Precinct 12. Uh, this is coming to you live on Saturday, October 16. Uh, we will be taking a recess uh, in about 10 minutes, and it will be a five-minute recess, uh, and we will continue uh, through the warrant. Uh, Mr. Russell, I can see you. If you can unmute yourself, you can begin speaking. Uh, welcome, Mr. Russell. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, since this is a debt burden, I'd like to know uh, what this $9.2 million does to the town's overall debt burden. Uh, are we within standard or acceptable municipal debt burden? Edward Russell questioning. We're going to go to Lynn Barrett, Director of Finance. Uh, good afternoon, Ms. Barrett. Thank you, moderator. So this was looked at in addition to the uh, Brook Road borrowing and the school roof borrowing in the next article, even though you um, Brook Road has now been um, failed, but all of these debt fit within our borrowing guidelines, fit within our six to eight percent. 
of our um, debt service. Um, so that there is not an issue there. We have a lot of debt um, that has happened over the last 20 years or so that is being paid off. So that's, this fits in very nicely um, going into the future. Thank you, Lynn Barrett, uh, Director of Finance. Uh, any further questions, Mr. Russell? No, thank you. Thank you. We're going to go to Precinct 1, Everett Malagudi. Mr. Malagudi, uh, do you care to be heard on Article 5? We're bringing in Everett Malagudi, uh, Precinct 1. We're debating uh, Article 5. Uh, this is the afternoon session of the Plymouth Town Meeting. And uh, this is going to be a two-thirds vote on the main motion. I can see you, Mr. Malagudi, if you can go ahead and speak. Yes, Everett Mal <clears throat> Excuse me. Everett Malagudi, Precinct 1. Um, <clears throat> my questions for this are, I saw some of the plans that were given to the select board when this was coming about, and it was combined with the future uh, renovations to the uh, Minimit fire station. And since looking at the actual um, West Plymouth fire station, is there a possibility or is it out of the question for the use of the actual uh, headspace <clears throat> above the vehicle bay, since it looks to me like it's far higher than necessary for uh, possible living quarters above it, similar to that of the uh, Manimet, uh station. And two, when we actually finish this renovation, if it does pass, will we have to then repave the parking area again that we just repaved within less than a year because of uh, heavy equipment load? And lastly, <clears throat> With that, are we looking at when we do this project and the future management project, whether it be in the next year or two, uh, looking at some of the ways to cut costs by bulking um, the actual interior finishes and all that into pre-orders so that we don't just necessarily unnecessarily spend money duplicate or triplicate for the same thing that could be reduced uh, through bulking? Thank you. Marlene McCollum is the assistant town manager. Uh, welcome. Um, I'll take a couple of these questions. First of all, we, we don't think we will have to repave the parking areas. We do think that the construction can work around the existing areas. Um, so that is, that is not our intention that those would be torn up and repaved. Um, as far as um, economies of scale in bidding these projects together and trying to um, bundle them. We did talk about that extensively. The projects are probably distinct enough that it's not likely to serve us well. Um, we're, not, we're not buying enough windows or enough doors or enough of the same products that we would receive in the economies of scale savings. Um, I will defer to Chief Bradley or the building commissioner, if they wanna add anything to my comments about building the living quarters above the apparatus space. This is not, this is not an, a recommendation that we're going to make because of separation between um, vehicle space and habitable space under um, health and safety codes. Uh, we would not recommend that people be living above the vehicle space. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Edward Bradley is the fire chief uh, for the town of Plymouth, and uh, we've had questions from Everett Malagudi. Uh, Mr. Bradley, uh, Chief Bradley, do you have anything further to add? No, we did look a little bit if we were able to do any kind of renovation, it would be above that uh, station. Uh, it would require, you know, a complete um, reconstruction of the underneath uh, the, the first floor because it was not made for second floor. And also, we still have to have uh, an addition on the first floor so that when they crews are returning and, and they're covered uh, in hazardous materials or debris or you know even from a medical call, they have a place where they be able to decon and clean both equipment themselves and their gear and a place to store their gear. Uh, and now all that has to be on the first floor. Right now they have um, th that 
what's the station that's there right now has no decon. There's no decontamination area at all. There is no gear washer. There is no gear storage area, and there is no health area. Uh, and those are the kind of things that would not be built on the second floor because you'd be traveling up there um, with the contaminated gear on. So that that would not be something that we we would uh, recommend at all. Thank you. Uh, any other comments, Mr. Malagudi? Yes, so <clears throat> um, Chief Bradley, so if the structure was actually built to uh, withstand um, a second floor addition slash renovation, you would have accept you would have possibly accepted probably doing that at least for the living quarters, not the decon. Bradley, if the original building that was built, if the original building that was built in 1975 was constructed at that time with the thought to put a second floor on, we would still need to be putting a first floor. Um, renovation on off of the apparatus floor where the firefighters uh, and the EMTs and paramedics can can uh, separate their living quarters from the um, hazards that they're bringing back uh, from calls. All right, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're going to move on. Uh, precinct 4, John Hammond. Mr. Hammond, uh, this is uh, the Plymouth Town meeting and we are on Article 5. And uh, this is coming before you live on Saturday, October 16. Uh, we're bringing back in Mr. Hammond uh, for his second opportunity uh, to address town meeting. Uh, Mr. Hammond is in Precinct 4. Uh, John Hammond uh, will be speaking on Article 5. It's a borrowing article. It requires a two-thirds vote. Uh, following um, his uh, speaking opportunity, uh, we'll be taking a brief uh, recess. Uh, we're welcoming in uh, John Hammond. Uh, and when we return, uh, I do have a motion uh, to close debate. We'll first hear from Mr. Hammond. Uh, John Hammond is in Precinct 4. And this is Plymouth's uh, Fall Annual Town Meeting 2021. It's coming to you live on Saturday, October 16. Uh, we're waiting to bring in uh, Precinct 4 John Hammond uh, as a speaker uh, to this uh, Plymouth Town meeting. And uh, following this, uh, we will take a brief recess, and then we will go to a uh, procedural motion uh, to close debate on Article 5 as we go into uh, our next two-hour session. Um, looking for John Hammond, I see on the screen, uh, the Mr. Ham, there he is. Uh, welcome, Mr. Hammond. Here I am, yes. Uh, Go ahead. I just, uh, I have assumed that um, the uh, people just making the decisions about this re new building have examined the idea of rehabilitating the existing uh, living quarters and have abandoned it. And I would like to have them just repeat that because I, it sounds to me like a really bad idea. Thank you. Uh, Edward Bradley, uh, fire chief, uh, responding to uh, Mr. Hammond's uh, concern. Yes, early on we hired the architect and brought on the project manager, um, not only at this station in West Plymouth, but in, in Manomet and also down in Bourne Road. They studied what was existing and made recommendations as to whether or not that could be retrofitted in any way. Uh, in the case of West Plymouth Station, the apparatus bays and where the apparatus um, repair shop bays are, uh, the bays are, you know, cinder block and brick. Uh, it has a new roof that was put on uh, a couple of years ago. Those are saveable. Uh, they will be... Um, renovated to like new condition and the asbestos will be removed from them so that we won't deal with this problem again. But the actual living quarters, there was there, all of our experts that we brought in said that there was nothing we could do at this station uh, to, uh, to renovate or, or build on what was currently there. It just wasn't any size, enough size and uh, didn't have the, um, the available room for all of the necessary things that we need just to meet OSHA and the National Fire Protection Agency um, recommendations. And Marlene may have something to add. Uh, Marlene you. McCollum, anything further to add? Marlene McCollum is the Assistant Town Manager. No, thank you. No, thank you. All right. Uh, are you all set, Mr. Hammond? No, thank you. 
Yes, Any further yes, comments? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, we'll just take the motion to close debate before the recess. Uh, Michael Landis moves to close debate. Uh, it is not debatable. We'll show the cue. We have uh, four people, Mr. Cunningham, Mr. Neville, uh, Mr. Hanlon, Mr. Joyce. Uh, we're going to look for the graphic on whether to close debate. It's a two-thirds vote. Uh, it requires, uh, it's a procedural vote, and uh, depending on uh, what the vote is, we'll determine uh, whether we go to recess or whether we vote on the main uh, motion. So uh, we're looking for the graphic on the motion to close debate. Uh, town meeting members uh, can move on whether to close debate. Uh, we're currently showing the last vote. There's the graphic. You've got the timer at 30. As soon as it starts to move, you can vote now. You can vote now on whether to close debate on Article 5. It's a two-thirds vote. Uh, town meeting members decide uh, whether to end debate or whether to continue it. And town meeting members are now voting on whether to continue uh, the debate on Article 5. Uh, as we go down, this is uh, Saturday, October 16, and we're coming to you live. Uh, town meeting members are uh, participating remotely. Uh, the voting has ended. Well, now uh, the poll is closed. We're looking for the results, and the results are as follows. 91 yes, 24 no, one abstention. It passes. We're going to vote on the main motion, then we'll go to break. Uh, so we're going to call up as we scroll through first, making sure everybody sees their vote. Uh, precincts 4, 5, and 6, now 7, 8, and 9. This is the vote on the motion uh, to close debate on Article 5. Uh, articles 10, uh, precincts 10, 11, and 12 are shown next, followed by precincts 13, 14, and 15, and we will end up with precincts 1, 2, and 3. And at this time, we're going to move now to a vote on the main motion under Article 5. Uh, it is a two-thirds vote. Uh, we'll wait for the graphic for Tommy members to be able to see uh, that they're ready to vote. Uh, there it is, Article 5. We're looking for the timer. We'll have 30 seconds. There it is. And momentarily, it'll start. The timer, vote now. You're voting on Article 5. Uh, it's a two-thirds vote. Uh, following the vote, we'll be taking a five-minute recess. Uh, it's to be our afternoon recess. Uh, and then we will return back uh, and go through the warrant. Uh, town meeting members are voting on Article 5. It's a two-thirds vote. And town meeting members have been uh, working uh, throughout the day uh, on the warrant for the fall annual town meeting. The voting has ended. We're waiting now for the results. And the results are 104 yes, 13 no, zero abstentions. The motion carries by more than two-thirds. Uh, we're going to scroll through the precincts briefly. <coughs> we're beginning with precincts 4, 5, and 6. Uh, we're going to continue with precincts 7, 8, and 9. Uh, you're going to be able to see your vote or the vote of your town meeting member. Precincts 10, 11, and 12. And we're going to continue on. Uh, precincts 13, 14, and 15. And finally, we're going to continue with precincts 1, 2, and 3. Uh, we are going to take a five-minute recess. And we'll be returning at approximately 2.45 p.m. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to welcome everybody back to this afternoon session of town meeting. Uh, we're now on the warrant, Article 6. Article 6 is withdrawn. We're now moving to Article 7. Mr. Canty moves the town vote to appropriate the sum of $10,000 to pay for costs associated with conducting an eDNA study at Tom Brook Billington C. Mr. Canty. In a unanimous vote of 13 to 0 with no abstentions, the Advisory and Finance Committee recommends town meeting approve Article 7. This eDNA study will establish a pre-construction data line of aquatic organisms within the Town Brook watershed before the dam repairs and fish bypass channel are constructed and provide valuable data on the ecological impacts of the project. Thank you. Uh, it's a majority vote. Uh, any discussion on it? I'm not seeing any. We're going to go to the vote. Uh, as soon as you see the graphic, you can uh, get ready to vote. Uh, we're being supported today by OTI Technology 
on the vVoter platform. There's the graphic. We're looking for the timer. It's there. As it starts to count down, you can vote. Vote now. You're voting on Article 7. It's a majority vote. Uh, town meeting member are, is in their second afternoon session. Uh, we have been here since 8 a.m. this morning. Uh, we're continuing through the warrant, uh, and we will continue. Uh, we have 30 articles uh, in the warrant. Uh, we are on Article 7. Uh, town meeting members are voting, and it's a majority vote. And uh, we're going to continue uh, with the vote. And at this time, uh, we're going to take the vote. And uh, it's closed. 98 in favor, 8 voting no, 1 abstention. Uh, the motion carries. I do want to apologize to a town meeting member who did contact me uh, in advance uh, of town meeting uh, to vote on this, but I didn't uh, see him on the screen, so I apologize for that. Uh, but we do have the vote, 98 in favor, uh, 8 in opposition, 1 abstention. We're going uh, through the precincts at this time uh, on the vote on Article 7. And while we do that, I'm going to read into the record Article 8 uh, to see if the town will vote to raise an appropriate borrow or transfer from available funds an amount of money to be expended in the direction of the building committee for roof replacements. Uh, Kevin Canty um, on the motion. In a unanimous vote of 13 to 0 with no abstentions, the Advisory and Finance Committee recommends town meeting approve Article 8. The roofs at issue here are over three decades old, have sections that are beyond repair, and need to be replaced to ensure the integrity of the building interior. It is important to note that though the town must borrow the full $11.6 million for this project, the school has received approval by the Massachusetts School Building Authority for reimbursement of 50.58% of these projects upon their completion which will substantially reduce the actual cost to the town. I would also note that as was mentioned earlier in relation to a bridge at Nathaniel Morton, with these, bridge, with these roofs being over three decades old, they are uh, therefore eligible for that MSBA grant that is being sought here and has been approved. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And uh, we're gonna continue on with the discussion. Uh, I do see uh, a town meeting member who may have wished to have voted on the previous one or speak, uh, but it's on the queue for this. Uh, so I am going to call up uh, Precinct 8, Donald Williams. Uh, Don Williams is a town meeting member. Uh, Mr. Williams, if you want to come on uh, at this time, uh, I'm not clear whether or not you wanted to speak on the previous uh, matter or if you wanted to be heard on Article 8. Uh, Precinct 8, Donald Williams. Uh, you're invited to uh, join us and speak uh, at uh, the afternoon session of town meeting. Uh, Mr. Williams, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. I wanted to speak on the previous one, and I'll be very brief. The good thing about David Gould is that he gets grants. The second good thing about David Gould is that he generates useful information that can be published and be a benefit to other uh other uh, like-minded towns to uh, get grants. So David's $10,000 here is going to enable us to get other grants along this line. I mean, he's done some great, great work with, with Herring and following Herring, as I'm sure people know, but I, I think he deserves kudos for doing this and uh, the town deserves kudos for doing a before and after analysis. Thank you. Uh, we're going to continue on with Article 8. We have no speakers. We're going to continue uh, with the vote. Uh, we're going to bring up the graphic on the vote for Article 8. And uh, under Article 8, uh, you have uh, the motion uh, before you. You've heard the presentation. Uh, we're looking for the timer now on this. Uh, and the voting will begin now. Uh, it's a two-thirds vote. And town meeting is voting on uh, Article 8. Uh, town meeting uh, is continuing with the warrant following uh, the vote on Article 8. We will move to Article 9, and we have multiple motions under Article 9. 
With respect to Article 8, it is a two-thirds vote uh, for uh, the borrowing uh, for this. The voting has now been completed. And as we continue to wait for the results, 114 yes, zero no, one abstention, it carries. We have 115 town meeting members uh, still with us. As we scroll through the precincts, I'm going to read into the record Article 9A. Mr. Canty moves. The town rescind the vote taken under Article 16B of the April 2021 town meeting regarding the borrowing for the National Memorial Pilgrim Meeting House. This is going to be a majority vote. Once we scroll through the voting on the last, we've done that. We've gone through all the precincts. So we're now going to go to Article 9A. I have no speakers. We're going to vote. Article 9A. It's a majority vote. And uh, we're going to continue uh, with that. And we're going to have a town meeting a vote as soon as we see the graphic uh, on uh, this. And uh, there it is. There's the timer. We're going to begin voting now. You're voting on Article 9A. It's to rescind the borrowing for the National Memorial Pilgrim Meeting House. Uh, we will, following this uh, vote, we'll go to Article 9B. Uh, we're continuing through the warrant uh, for town meeting. And uh, as we continue uh, through that, uh, we will have people participating uh, on the V voter uh, platform. Uh, and uh, we've now completed the voting. And uh, we'll see the results. 114 voting in favor, zero voting no, one abstention. We're going to scroll through the precincts. And as we do that, I'm going to read into the record Article 9B. Mr. Canty moves the town appropriate the sum of $806,936 to amend Article 16F of the April 2021 town meeting to increase the debt service budget and that to meet this appropriation, $151,046 should be transferred from the historic reserves fund balance and $655,890 shall be transferred from the fiscal 2022 estimated CPA revenues to be added to the budget reserve. It's a majority vote, and we're finishing the scrolling on the last vote. We finished up with precincts one, two, and three. So I'm going to go to Kevin Canty, chair of the Advisory and Finance Committee, who will speak on Article 9B. Mr. Canty. In a unanimous vote of 14 to 0 with no abstentions, the Advisory and Finance Committee recommends town meeting approve Article 9B. Approval of this article will amend Article 16F of the April 2021 town meeting to increase the, increase the debt service budget by $806,936 to pay the principal and interest on the note involved in the previous article that you just voted on. The funding sources for the increase are $151,046 from historic reserves, and $655,890 of the fiscal year 2022 estimated CPA revenues to be added to the budgeted reserve. Thank you. And we're going to bring in the director. We're going to bring in the director of finance, uh, Lynn Barrett. And before we do that, uh, we're going to do a point of order for precinct four town meeting member Jean Patnode Lane. Uh, Jean Lane, uh, you have a point of order, and uh, if it's going to take her a moment coming in from Plymouth North, uh, we can hear from the direct. She's in. Uh, we're going to hear from Jean uh, Patno Lane. Uh, good afternoon. My machine wasn't working for a while, so I missed voting yeses on seven, eight, whatever they were that was missing. The machine all of a sudden didn't record. And they just fixed it. I uh, don't even know what was missing. Yeah, Jean, uh, unfortunately, I can't take a vote on the comment, whatever it was. I would need to know specifically uh, the vote, but I understand. Uh, the main vote, the vote for the fire station, um, the, and whatever was after that. So you voted yes on the fire station, Article 5, and you voted yes on Article 7, the $10,000 for the EDNA study? 
and you voted yes on the schools? Yes. On the school roof? Yes. All right. Thank you. Yes. And you voted yes on rescinding Thanks. the borrowing on the town meeting house. Thank you. Uh, and now we're going to go to Lynn Barrett, Director of Finance. Good afternoon, Lynn Barrett. Hi. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. So I have a correction to the motion for Article 9B. Um, if we could just strike at the end of the sentence to be added to the budgeted reserve and just put a period at the end of revenues. Okay, I accept that change. Uh, Mr. Canty, I assume uh, you have no objection uh, to that change, Mr. Canty? I have no objection to the change. Thank you. Uh, that uh, change has been accepted. Uh, that is now uh, the motion uh, as revised. Uh, precinct 3, Gerald Chirico. Uh, Mr. Sirico, welcome uh, to Plymouth Town Meeting. We're bringing in uh, Gerald Sirico. He's in Precinct 3, uh, and this will be his first uh, speaking at this uh, particular town meeting, uh, coming to you live on Saturday, October 16. Uh, Gerald Sirico is in Precinct 3, and we are currently discussing Article 9B, mm. and uh, Gerald Sirico is with uh, Precinct 3, and uh, we're looking for him uh, to come in where town meeting members are using uh, two video conferencing platforms. Uh, one is with OTI Technology, is a vVoter platform, also the Zoom webinar video conferencing platform, and uh, we understand, unfortunately, uh, Mr. Sirico is not responding uh, to coming in uh, before us. So uh, unless uh, he uh, indicated on the V voter uh, that he wanted to speak on the motion, uh, but he's not coming in. Uh, and so uh, unless uh, Mr. Sirico comes in, uh, we're going to have to move on. Uh, Mr. Sirico, I apologize. Uh, and I'm not sure whether or not that was uh, an operator error or whether or not uh, you intended to speak uh, on Article 9B. But uh, at this time, unless we uh, can bring him in, uh, we're going to move to the graphic to vote on Article 9B. It's a majority vote. And uh, let's bring in the graphic uh, for the voting on Article 9B. And now the timer. Uh, we have the graphic, we're going to timer, and now we're going to begin voting as the clock starts to run. Vote now. You're voting on Article 9B. It's a majority vote. Uh, town meeting is voting. You have uh, 30 seconds in which to cast your vote. And then uh, we'll be moving on uh, in the warrant, uh, but currently we're at Article 9B. Uh, town meeting uh, continues to go through the warrant. Uh, we began at 8 a.m. this morning. Uh, we have 30 articles in the warrant, and town meeting can now end the voting. The polls close, waiting for the results. 116 yes, one no, two abstentions. The motion carries. And as we scroll through the precincts, Article 9C through Article 9G, they are all withdrawn. And I'm going to read into the record as you look at the vote. Uh, I'm going to read Article 10. Mr. Canty moves the town vote that the town authorize the select board to accept temporary and permanent easements for access, construction, sewer, drainage, and utility purposes on, over, across, under, and through portions of the properties located off Spring Lane. We've seen all the precincts from the previous vote, so we're now going to go to Mr. Kevin Canty, Chair of the Advisory and Finance Committee, on Article 10. It's a majority vote, Mr. Canty. In a unanimous vote of 13 to 0 with no abstentions, the Advisory and Finance Committee recommends town meeting approve Article 10. Town meeting approval of the easements outlined in this article would enable the Department of Marine and Environmental Affairs to continue working with the consulting engineer, town council, and the adjacent property owners to complete the necessary formal survey, easement language, and recording at the Registry of Deeds 
prior to the onset of construction activities relative to the repairs to the Jenny Pond Dam and the installation of a new sewer main. We have no speakers in the queue. We're going to go to the vote for Article 10. It's a majority vote. Uh, town meeting members continue to be uh, voting. There's the graphic. We're looking for the timer. There's the timer. We'll begin voting now. You're voting on Article 10, and it's a majority vote. And uh, town meeting will continue uh, with the next article after this vote. You're voting on Article 10. Uh, this is a substantive vote. Uh, town meeting members earlier had many procedural votes, and now we're continuing to move through the warrant. We're doing it chronologically. We've already voted Article 29. Uh, however, we're going to go through the rest of the warrant, and voting has ended. The poll has closed. The results are coming through. 115 yes, one no, one abstention. We once again are going to go through the precincts. Uh, and they will be shown to you. And uh, as we go through the precincts, we're going to look at Article 11. Article 11, Mr. Canty moves the town vote to authorize the select board to accept permanent easements for access and utility purposes on, over, across, under, and through portions of properties located off Herring Pond Road, and at this time, it's a majority vote. Kevin Canty, Chair of the Advisory and Finance Committee. In a unanimous vote of 13 to 0 with no abstentions, the Advisory and Finance Committee recommends town meeting approve Article 11. Town meeting approval of the easement outlined in this article will allow for the town and the public to gain legal access to the Cedarville Cemetery. Thank you, Kevin Canty. Uh, we have no speakers. We're going to go to the vote on Article 11. Uh, this is a majority vote. We'll see uh, once again that we have the graphic provided by OTI uh, Technology. They are here in the studio. Uh, and you'll also see the timer that's provided by PAC TV. And the timer will begin. You're voting beginning now. You're voting on Article 11. It's a majority vote. Uh, following Article 11, we move to Article 12. Uh, town meeting uh, will continue uh, through the warrant uh, this afternoon. Uh, this majority vote uh, on Article 11 uh, would be to authorize the select board uh, to accept permanent easements. And we're continuing with the voting on Article 11. We have town meeting members at Plymouth North High School as well as uh, throughout the community. Voting has ended. The polls closed. 118 yes, zero no, zero abstentions. It carries unanimously. Article 12, Mr. Canty moves the town vote to rescind the following amounts that have been authorized to be borrowed, but which are no longer needed for the purposes for which they were approved. And you have a sheet here of those uh, amounts that will be rescinded. It's a majority vote, Mr. Canty. In a unanimous vote of 12 to 0 with no abstentions, the Advisory and Finance Committee recommends town meeting approve Article 12. These projects have either come in under budget, had their original scope changed in a way that did not require the use of the full amount originally funded for them, or received some funding via a grant so as to reduce the town's share. And, as such, the unused borrowing authority is no longer needed and should be rescinded as a housekeeping measure. Thank you. No speakers. We're going to go to the vote. We're on Article 12. Uh, the graphic, again, is before you. The timer is before you. Begin voting. As the timer moves, vote now. You're voting on Article 12. It's a majority vote. Uh, this is Plymouth Town Meeting. It's coming to you live on October 16. Town Meeting members are participating remotely. They're able to do that because Massachusetts General Laws, uh, Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, allow us to do that uh, for a representative town meeting. Uh, and so we are doing that. Uh, and town meeting uh, has been voting throughout the day on B Voter. The voting has ended. The polls have closed. Waiting for the results. 119 0, zero. It's unanimous. So we're now going to go to Article 13. Article 13 is withdrawn. Article 14, as we scroll through the precincts on the last uh, voted article, 
I'll read into the record that Mr. Canty moves the town vote to amend the general bylaws, chapter 143, departmental revolving funds, by adding to column C of the chart therein with respect to the Plymouth Beach Fund, the underlying text and deleting the strike through text as follows. You have the text. It's a majority vote. And we'll hear from an explanation from Kevin Canty, Mr. Canty. In a unanimous vote of 12 to 0 with no abstentions, the Advisory and Finance Committee recommends town meeting approve Article 14. Approval of this article will formalize the town's current policy for receipts credited to the Plymouth Beach Revolving Fund. We have no speakers. We'll go to the vote on Article 14. It's a majority vote. Uh, the graphic is provided again by OTI Technologies. We have it. We have the timer. When the timer moves, you can start to vote. Vote now. You're voting on Article 14. It's a majority vote. Town meeting members have been voting using the V-Voter uh, platform. Uh, they're becoming quite proficient now uh, as we're into, uh, I think, our seventh hour uh, of town meeting. And uh, we'll continue uh, throughout the afternoon as we go through the warrant. Uh, and town meeting members have 30 uh, seconds in which to vote. The voting now ends. The poll is closed. We're going to wait for the results. They're coming through from OTI, and they are as follows. 111 yes, 1 no, 1 abstentions. It carries. It is more than a majority. And as we scroll through the precincts for the vote, on Article 14, reading of the record, Article 15, which is Mr. Canty moves the town vote to accept the last paragraph of General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 5B, and dedicate 100% of the extended maintenance fee assessed upon the issuance of street opening permits to the Pavement Management Stabilization Fund. Such dedication be effective as of fiscal year 2023 is provided in the warrant. Mr. Canty. In a unanimous vote of 12 to 0 with no abstentions, the Advisory and Finance Committee recommends town meeting approve Article 15. Approval of this article will allow the town to earmark the fees collected when recently paved roads, meaning those that have been paved within the last five years, are cut into so that the fees can go directly into the Pavement Management Stabilization Fund. Thank you. And uh, we're going to go to Precinct 1, Everett Malagudi, who wants to speak on the motion. And as we do that, a reminder, this is the majority vote. And uh, Mr. Malagudi, we'd like to welcome you back as a speaker uh, in this afternoon session of town meeting. Uh, Mr. Malagudi, good afternoon. Go ahead and speak. Yes, I'm actually not speaking on this. I was speaking on the prior one, but you went too expediently to recognize my uh, motion. All right, uh, Ms. Malagudi, unfortunately, uh, your request came in simultaneously with the vote, so we we're unable to uh, accept that. And unless someone who voted it on actually was presented in before the thing came up on the screen uh mr malagudi it did not get received by me as moderator on my monitor prior to taking the vote however if you wish to move to reconsider the last article did you vote on the prevailing side i did not then you could not move to reconsider uh but if someone else moves to reconsider, we can reopen it and further debate it. Uh, meanwhile, I'm going to go to Precinct 12, Betsy Hall. Uh, Betsy, would you like to be heard on Article 15? Uh, we're welcome to this session of town meeting. Uh, if you can unmute yourself, we can see you. Uh, go ahead, Betsy Hall. Yes, just a quick question. The five years, um, where does that figure come from? Why not six? Why not 10? Why not three? I'm sure somebody has an explanation. Thank you. Uh, Lynn Barrett is the director of finance. Uh, Lynn Barrett, if you can respond uh, to Betsy Hall on a question on Article 15. We'll bring in Lynn Barrett. director. Um, of I would actually defer to 
I would defer to either the director of public works or Sheila Scarzi, the town engineer, for the reasoning for the five years, if they're still. Uh, we'll go to meeting. Jonathan Beter. He's the director of public works. Uh, Mr. Beter, can you further respond uh, to Betsy Hall? Yeah, absolutely, Mr. Martin. I was actually kind of hoping to hear what Lynn had to say, but yes. So the five years part of our road program is pretty typical throughout any public works department in terms of kind of preserving the roadways. Five years, anything after is where your roads start to break down. So that's why we put the, the five-year moratorium on the roads. We don't want, we really don't want anybody touching or cutting into our roads until at least five years. That's how we get the biggest bang for our bucks in terms of longevity. So we really started that in 2011, 2012 with a five-year moratorium on the road. So this really helps us in terms of limiting anybody touching the road. Usually it's the gas company or for some unforeseen issue, issue, whether it be a leak or some emergency dig safe or something along those lines. But again, the five-year moratorium is part of our road program where we try to really limit anybody touching our newly paved roads. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, we're now gonna go to Precinct 10, Alan Costello, who has a point of order. And while we bring him in, uh, I'd remind Tommy e members, because of the dedication, it will be a two thirds vote and not a majority vote as printed in the materials. Uh, I would like to welcome in uh, Mr. Costello. Mr. Costello, you have a point of order. Good afternoon. Uh, yes, good afternoon, uh, Mr. Moderator. I'd like to uh, make a motion to uh, reconsider Article 14 in the interest of having uh, Mr. Malaguti be heard. Uh, we're moving at a pretty good pace here, and I'd like to go back so that we can satisfy all the town meeting members. Thank you. Uh, your motion uh, will be accepted after we vote on Article 15, provided that you vote on the prevailing side, which I believe you did, since it was everyone but one. Did you vote on the prevailing side, Mr. Costello? I did, Mr. Moderator. Thank you, Mr. Costello. Uh, your motion is accepted. We're now going to continue with the debate on Article 15. Uh, and on Article 15, it's a two-thirds vote. I have no more speakers, so I'm going to call up uh, the graphic for the vote on Article 15. And on Article 15, there it is. We're looking for the timer. There it is. And as the timer moves, you can move to vote. You're voting on Article 15. It's a two-thirds vote. Following this, we'll go back to a motion to reconsider Article 14 presented by Precinct 10, Alan Costello, who voted on the prevailing side. We're currently voting, however, on Article 15, which is a substantive motion, and it is a two-thirds vote. Town meeting members have the opportunity uh, to decide whether to accept that paragraph. Uh, the voting's ended, the polling closed, waiting for the results, 116 yes, no one abstention zero. That concludes Article 15. As we scroll through the precincts, again, I have accepted uh, Mr. Costello's I have accepted Mr. Costello's motion uh, to reconsider. And uh, Alan, do you wish to be heard further on your motion to reconsider? Nothing further at this time other than uh, I, I feel that uh, uh, we have the time to go back and have uh, Mr. Malibudi's um, uh, concerns be addressed. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. There are no other speakers. Uh, we've gone through the precincts on Article 15. We're now going to do a procedural motion to reconsider. So uh, OTI, if we can put the graphic up on the motion to reconsider. Uh, I'm told we need a moment uh, to set it up. It's a motion uh, to reconsider. Uh, for town meeting members that are new, uh, it is possible, as you saw earlier in the meeting, to change the order articles, and that is a two-thirds vote. And we did that. We moved Article 29 prior to Article 1. It's also possible... Uh, to do the procedural motion uh, presented by Mr. Costello because he voted on the prevailing side, which means he vote in favor of Article 14. He can now move to reconsider Article 14, uh, which he is asking town meeting uh, to do at this time. And so town meeting will have an opportunity to vote as to whether to reconsider, reopen Article 14, and continue to debate it. Uh, it is a majority vote uh, for a motion to reconsider. Uh, and we're waiting for 
uh, the presentation to start on the graphic uh, for the motion to reconsider. Uh, this is coming uh, from the uh, support of OTI technology. There it is. We're waiting for the timer. We have it. When you can start to vote as the timer moves now, you're voting on a motion to reconsider Article 14. This is the majority vote and is a procedural manner in which for town meeting members uh, to vote as to whether or not to reconsider Article 14. Town meeting members are now voting on whether to reconsider Article 14. If we do not vote to reconsider, we'll move on to Article 16, and if we do reconsider, we'll go back and reopen Article 14. And now the results, 65 yes, no 46, two abstentions. And before I call on Mr. Uh, Malaguti, who we can bring in, first going to call on Precinct 8, Catherine Holmes, who has a point of order. Uh, Catherine Holmes, uh, I, I can uh, see you. we have your audio. Have a, what is your point of order I, as we scroll through I the precincts? A, I have a known uh, technical issue on my side that's my fault uh, with my equipment. And so I was a yes on Article 15. It did not get recorded. Thank you. Article 15, yes, Catherine Holmes. And now we're going to bring in uh, Everett Malaguti, Precinct 1. Everett. Uh, we're back into the debate on Article 14, and at this time, uh, if you want to proceed uh, to speak uh, on Article 14, and what would you like to present uh, to town meeting at this time? Everett Malaguti is with Precinct 1. Uh, and Mr. Malaguti, uh, you can join us uh, once again uh, through the Zoom uh, webinar video conferencing platform. Uh, that we've been using throughout the afternoon. And uh, I can see that you've joined us. Unmute yourself and you can begin speaking. Yes, Everett Malaguti, Precinct 1. Um, as chair of the Natural Resources and Coastal Beaches Committee, which this article affects, my committee had voted unanimously in opposition of this article and of the information in the packets that preceded this article um, in an earlier vote taken in 2019. My rationale for this is that while the fund actually does have a numerous amount of activities that are funded out of it from full-time salaries, NROs, um, repairs to the beach and retaining wall police officers and so forth, that the Funding by taking away funding now, which used to be 100% and now doing a 25-75 split is somewhat changing what all the other revolving funds have is they have a direct fund to it and it's not a split funding within those other revolving funds. And also two, by taking away the money from this fund that it's not developing the cushion that's needed to not take from the taxpayers for when needed repairs are needed for the beach and the seawall and revetments, which is part of what this fund is for. While I appreciate Ms. Barrett's um, looking at new ways to fund things, I believe that this article should be voted down and that the actual items that are funded out of it be changed at spring town meeting when we review all 51, uh, 53 and a half E uh, revolving articles to change the outcome, sort of like a similar thing like we're doing in a pro in a future article for the Little Red Schoolhouse that we're developing a fund for it and we created the language of it. We should basically amend the language to offset some of the concerns from other departments that use their actual staff for the beach and fund it that way and not by removing funding uh, from this critical resource. Thank you. Thank you, Precinct 1, Everett Malaguti. We now go to Precinct 12, Betsy Hall. We're debating, once again, Article 14, and we're going to bring in Betsy Hall as a speaker on the debate on Article 14. Uh, welcome again, uh, Betsy Hall, and good afternoon. Uh, you can unmute yourself and uh, go ahead and speak. Steve. And thank you, Everett, for this clarification. 
Um, I'm seeing um, language, but I'm not seeing dollars. Can um, we get a, an idea of how much dollars are being um, talked about here in terms of 25% and 75% of how much money? We'll go Please. to Lynn Barrett, Director of Finance, responding to Betsy Hall. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. So we are not requesting to take money away from Plymouth Beach Revolving Fund. They never had this money in the first place. Back in May of 2019, we increased the daily parking fee at Plymouth Beach from $15 to $20. At that time, I asked the select board to agree with a policy of putting that extra $5 into the general fund and not having it go to the Plymouth Beach Revolving Fund. And the reason for that is all of the parking lot attendants at Plymouth Beach, the lifeguards at Plymouth Beach, all of the costs associated with running that part of the beach are funded in the general fund. Prior to this, all of the revenues from the daily parking were going to Plymouth Beach Revolving Fund. So it's not that there are any costs in the Plymouth Beach Revolving Fund that are not being covered by this fee. And Plymouth Beach Revolving Account, as of today, has a balance of $367,000. So I think the cushion um, is fine and they're not really being affected by this $5 going into the general fund. Um, it was just an attempt to try to reduce the cost to the taxpayers by using that increase in the daily parking at Plymouth Beach to pay for those costs that are coming out of the general fund. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. And I do have a motion to close debate, but I have no other speakers in the queue. So uh, at this time, we're going to go ahead and vote uh, on Article 14 once again since we have no other speakers. So if we can call up Article 14 for the vote on the main motion. And there it is, it's a vote on Article 14. We have the timer, we'll begin the timer, we'll begin voting. Uh, you can vote now, and again, it's a majority vote. Town meeting members are voting once again on Article 14, which has been reconsidered by town meeting. And so we'll take a vote on this. Uh, this is a procedural uh, mechanism that is available uh, to town meeting members uh, to go back to an early article if they want to reconsider it and further discuss it and further debate it. And that's what we've done. We've now finished the voting again and the polls have closed and we'll take the results. And these are the results coming in from OTI. 97 yes, 18 no, one abstention. It carries. As we scroll through the precincts, I will read into the record Article 16. Mr. Canty moves the town vote pursuant to General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53, E 1 half, to establish a new revolving fund to be known as the Little Red Schoolhouse Revolving Fund, and further to amend General Bylaws, Chapter 143, Departmental Revolving Funds, particularly 143 5, by inserting a new row at the end of the table of authorized revolving funds, and you have the table, and further to establish fiscal year 2022 spending limit for this revolving fund at $30,000. It's a majority vote. Mr. Canty. In a unanimous vote of 14 to 0 with no abstentions, the Advisory and Finance Committee recommends town meeting approve Article 16. Approval of this article will establish a revolving fund to deposit fees collected from the rental of the Little Red Schoolhouse to various groups and establish a $30,000 spending limit for that revolving fund for fiscal year 2022. We have no speakers in the queue, so we're going to go to the vote on Article 16. It's a majority vote. There's the graphic. We're looking for the timer. We have the timer. When it starts, you can start voting. Vote now on Article 16. It's a majority vote. Uh, town meeting is in its afternoon uh, second session. Uh, we're going through the warrant. We're on Article 16, and we're voting on Article 16. And uh, we're going to continue uh, through the warrant. 
And uh, the next article with a motion is Article 17. Uh, we're completing the voting on Article 16. As the voting concludes, the polls close. We'll see the results uh, from OTI uh, tabulating uh, 115 yes, two no, two abstentions. It carries. As we scroll through the precincts, I will read Article 17 into the record. Mr. Canty moves the town vote to authorize the select board and the board of assessors pursuant to the provisions of the general laws, Chapter 59, 38H, to negotiate and enter into an agreement for payments in lieu of taxes pilot for a 999.6 kilowatt DC, more or less, Soto photovoltaic energy generating facility for Black Cat Solar, LL Solar One LLC. And it's a majority vote. Mr. Canty, on your motion. In a vote of 13 to 1 with no abstentions, the Advisory and Finance Committee recommends town meeting approve Article 17. Approval of this payment in lieu of taxes agreement will be for personal property tax associated with a ground mounted solar farm development located off Black and Watercourse Roads, shown on the assessor's map 90. The farm is located on approximately 11.276 acres and can produce up to 999.6 kilowatts. The terms of this agreement will be $20,000 per megawatt direct current with an escalation of 2.5% per year for 20 years. These terms are similar to the terms in our other solar pilot agreements throughout the town. Majority vote. We have no speakers. We're going to go to the vote. The graphic will appear on your screen. We have it. The timer uh, will show that we have 30 seconds, which we have, and we'll start voting when the clock moves. Vote now. You're voting on Article 17, and it is a majority vote. Town meeting members are using the V-Voter uh, platform from OTI. Uh, and will continue in the warrant following the completion of this vote. Uh, this is coming to you live on October 16. This is Plymouth Fall 2021 Annual Town Meeting. We have 30 articles in the warrant, and we're finishing the vote on Article 17. Polls have closed. Waiting for results, 109 yes, 3 no, 0 abstentions. It carries by more than a majority. As you scroll through the precincts, I will read that Article 18 is withdrawn. Therefore, I will read Article 19 into the record. Mr. Canty moves the town vote to accept the provisions of general laws, Chapter 59, Section 5K, which authorizes the select board to establish a senior citizen property tax work-off abatement program. Mr. Canty, it's a majority vote uh, on your motion. In a unanimous vote of 12 to 0 with no abstentions, the Advisory and Finance Committee recommends town meeting approve Article 19. Approval of this article will update the town's existing senior tax work-off abatement program to comply with new state guidelines on that program and also create a tax work-off abatement program for veterans in town. And yes, uh, it is in the record the entire amount the senior citizen property tax work off and the veterans property tax work off. Uh, precinct four, Gene Lane, Gene Patno Lane has a point of order. Uh, let's bring in precinct four, Jean Patno Lane. Uh, she is at Plymouth North High School. Uh, she is there with her uh, tech buddy, and we're going to bring her in uh, to speak uh, to Plymouth Town Meeting. Uh, this is coming to you live on October 16, and there she is. Uh, welcome. Hi again, it keeps misfunctioning. So could you give me a no vote for that one that had uh, about the black cat watercourse road? It's, it's lost anyway, but I vote no on that. There were only three. No votes. vote on no. Article 17, thank you. And now we're continuing on with Article 19, we have no speakers, so we will proceed uh, to the vote, uh, and town meeting members uh, will have an opportunity to vote uh, through the V-Voter platform, and once again, uh, they're being presented 
uh, with a graphic and there'll be a timer and then the timer will begin and they can begin to vote now. It's a majority vote. You're voting on Article 19 in the warrant for the Plymouth Fall Annual 2021 Town Meeting uh, on Article 19. Uh, this is coming to you live. Town Meeting members are participating remotely. Uh, they are throughout the town of Plymouth. Uh, and we have a few town meeting members also at Plymouth North High School. And a few of us are also at the PAC TV studios. The voting has ended. The polls have closed. 109 in favor, one in opposition, two abstentions. It carries. As we scroll through, I will announce that Article 20 is withdrawn. We therefore move to Article 21. And under Article 21, we have a motion. And it is fairly lengthy, so I'm going to refer you to the text that was provided. But essentially, Mr. Canty moves the town vote to accept the provisions of General Laws, Chapter 59, Section 5, Clause 22nd H. And Mr. Canty, Chair of the Advisory Finance Committee, your comments. In a unanimous vote of 12 to 0 with no abstentions, the Advisory and Finance Committee recommends town meeting approve Article 21. Approval of this article will accept provisions of the BRAVE Act, which provide a property tax exemption for the surviving parents or guardians of all armed services and National Guard veterans who lost their lives as a result of active duty service pursuant to the eligibility requirements detailed within the materials. Thank you. And this is the majority vote. I have no speakers in the queue. We're going to go to the vote. Uh, it'll be provided uh, on our V Voter platform. Tom Eman will be able to vote on Article 21. I do see Precinct 4 Michael Babini. So before we go to the vote, uh, let's bring in Precinct 4 Michael Babini, uh, who has requested uh, to be heard followed by Precinct 15, Kevin Joyce. We'll begin with Precinct 4, Michael Babini. This is on Article 21, uh, which is in the warrant. Uh, we have a motion provided by the Advisory and Finance Committee, and we have two town meeting members who have requested uh, approval to speak, and they've been recognized. Uh, I see Mr. Babini uh, is off of the uh, V voter uh, are we bringing in uh, Michael Babini, Precinct 4? Uh, Michael Babini is Precinct... He took himself out, I'm being told. And therefore, uh, there he is, Precinct 4, Michael Babini. Good afternoon, Mr. Babini. Good afternoon, Mr. Moderator. How are you? Good. Go ahead. Um, I, uh, I just wanted to... I, I certainly support this article. I think the... The intent is, is there. It's a great article, and it gives those who have given their lives for, the, for our country a, a benefit, the parents of those. Uh, however, in the process, uh, there was a lot of confusion around the, the requirements for this particular exemption. And my sense was, the way it was presented initially, was that uh, you had to be a town resident to get it uh, for, for a number of years. Uh, and the way the statute is written, that's really not the case because it talks about being a resident of Massachusetts for five years. Um, so in essence, if you are, uh, if you live in another town or city and your town or city doesn't accept this provision of the law, uh, you could move to another town and take full advantage of the uh, exemption. It's a full exemption for life, by the way. Um, so uh, I'm concerned about that. And I think the town should work with our legislative uh, group to see if we can make some changes to this law that makes it more uh, of a requirement that they live in the town in which they're receiving the exemption for a period of five years. So I'm just bringing that to the attention of town meeting because I think this kind of opens up a Pandora's box there are only a few cities and towns in Massachusetts that accepted this provision. Uh, and because of that, uh, I think we are kind of exposing ourselves to uh, people moving into town to take advantage of this. It's a, it's a large uh, uh, commitment from the town. And uh, I just want to make sure that people are aware of the uh, issues with the way the law is written. 
Thank you. I'm actually going to call on Betty Cavaco. She is, again, uh, vice chair of the select board. Uh, Betty Cavaco followed by, um, I'm seeing a procedural motion being presented. So, uh, Betty Cavaco, welcome back to the town meeting. Thank you, and good afternoon again. Um, so the intent of this was exactly uh, the way it was written, to, written to accept for the town of Plymouth to accept um, a waiver of you know taxes for our Gold Star uh, family members, remaining family members. So um, although only a few towns have accepted it, and I'm not sure how many, I think it's more than just a few. And Plymouth wanted to. Um, do this as well. I remember that um, there was a family that came in front of the select board. And at that time, it was suggested to push it through town meeting. And that's why it's here. And of course, I support this Article 21. Thank you. Um, so before we go to more speakers, I have a procedural motion. Precinct 15, Michael Hanlon. Mr. Hanlon, what's your motion? Uh, I'm not sure this is the appropriate time to do this, but I would like to make a motion to reconsider Article 4B1. And if you want to take the uh, the current article, and I, I can. Yeah, you're right. It it's not the that. appropriate time. Uh, it's it. We're in the middle of an article, but I'll take it up after we complete this. I do have one question. Did you vote on the prevailing side? Thank you, Mr. Hanlon. Did, did you vote? What? Yes. You voted yes. On, on Article well, 4B1? I voted no again. He and that was the prevailing, the prevailing side, side. Yes, I did. Thank you very much. Yes. Okay. Uh, we're going to continue on with Article 21, and I have Precinct 15, Kevin Joyce. Mr. Joyce, uh, welcome back to the afternoon session of town meeting, uh, and you're welcome uh, to join us and to speak on Article 21. Kevin Joyce. Uh, this is Plymouth Town Meeting coming to you live on October hey, 16. Kevin Joyce, it takes uh, a little go while, ahead and speak. I guess, for this thing to um, um, reboot itself or whatever they do. But oh, thank you for allowing me to speak on this. Obviously, I am very much in favor of this. I am obviously a speak a up, Mr. Veteran. Joyce. Can you hear me now? Go ahead, speak up. Any better? Okay, let me just make sure that my volume is all right. Is that volume better? Go ahead. Yes. Okay, so as a Vietnam veteran, U.S. Marine Corps, um, I'm strongly in favor of this article. In fact, I think it's way overdue. I know there are several towns in Massachusetts, but a lot of states throughout the, um, the nation have instituted something like this, similar to this, where um, the waiver of property taxes and so forth uh, are done for the death of a veteran. Um, Again, I am very much in favor. I want to go on the record that I want to thank the, the select board and, of course, town meeting to consider this and please vote yes for this article. Thank you. Thank you. I have no other speakers in the queue. Therefore, we will return to the motion under Article 21. We'll take a vote at this time. Actually, no, uh, I see that Precinct 10, Alan Costello, uh, would like to be recognized. Uh, so let's go to Mr. Costello first. Uh, we'll bring in Precinct 10, Alan Costello, uh, to speak on Article 21. Welcome back, Mr. Good Costello. Afternoon, Mr. Uh, good afternoon, Mr. Moreira. Uh, uh, I'm in agreement with everyone so far. It seems like a very noble um, warrant article. However, uh, can the petitioner or whoever uh, worked up the um, wording or the legal wording for the warrant article address Mr. Babini's concerns. Uh, I could see that if uh, it became a haven for someone, I think that's pretty a strong word, but I don't know how many of these um, uh, exemptions you know, a town would be able to uh, withstand. So. Is there any truth to what Mr. Babini has said that these, these things could be a lifetime uh, exemption and could have people move in from out of town? Thank uh, you. Mr. Costello, um, I can tell you that what we have presented to us uh, from the select board is in the statute, so we can't change it. 
So um, it's either to vote it up or to vote it down. Um, with respect to your question, I could bring in uh, Roxanne Whitbeck. She's the Director of Veteran Services. I don't know if she has anything else uh, to add to your comments or to the comments of uh, Mr. Babini, uh, but Roxanne Whitbeck is the Director of Veteran Services, and uh, if she is still on the panel, uh, we will bring her in. Um, so can we see uh, if Roxanne Whitbeck is with us uh, as a panelist? Uh, she's the Director of Veteran Services, and if not, uh, we'll go to another panelist. Uh, this is a debate on Article 21. Uh, she's not with us. We'll go to Lynn Barrett. She's the Director of Finance. Yes, I am. I'm here. No, no, I'm right here, Steve. Oh, you're there, Roxanne. Okay. I was told they couldn't see you. Uh, so, yes, Roxanne, go ahead and speak, and we'll see if we can bring in your video. Go ahead, Roxanne. Um, well, basically, this... Um, this is a basically this is an article to um, um, help Gold Star families, obviously. Um, it, and it's not like a beacon sign to bring people into Plymouth and and um, you know, it's not it's just to um, I guess just to say a, a small thank you to um, the families that have lost or have given the ultimate sacrifice. Um, it's if you read the the um, the information that I sent in, it's like it's twenty four cents to each. It's a twenty four cent burden to each taxpayer. Um, I, I think that's a small price to pay for, or a small. It's just a small token for them. I mean. This is a huge, for this family, this is a huge thing. It's like make or break, they're, they're gonna stay in their house or not. Thank you. Mm -mm. Any further comments, Mr. Costello? I appreciate the answer and I, I wanna make sure it's clear. I'm not trying to alter the benefit. I think it's a great idea, but I thought that it, it, it could use, a, you know, a little clarification uh, based on Mr. Mabini's uh, concerns and if, if that's the case, uh, I would I would probably think about it in a different light. But you're telling me this time it's a 24 cent um, pass through to the to the, to the taxpayer. Um, then then I'll take your for your word. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we have a motion to close debate uh, from Donald Williams. However, I don't see anybody else in the queue, and so unless someone shows up in the queue, we're just going to go to the vote on Article 21. Uh, we'll see the graphic coming up on our screen, and uh, that'll be to vote on the main motion, Article 21, that timer, 30 seconds. Let's go ahead, when the timer starts, now you can vote. You're voting on Article 21, it's a majority vote. Uh, following this, we'll go back to the motion to reconsider Article 4B1, but currently you're voting on Article 21. It's a majority vote. Town meeting members have uh, the opportunity to approve and accept the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, uh, which is known as the Act relative to the BRAVE Act. And so the BRAVE Act uh, is under Article 21. The voting has ended. The poll is closed. We're looking for the results. Uh, the results will be coming through as town meeting members have completed their vote. And for everyone else, uh, the results are as follows. Uh, 99 yes, 3 no, six abstentions, and we'll scroll through the precinct so you can see how people voted. And as we do that, I will read into the record a motion to reconsider Article 4B1, Mike Precinct 15, Michael Hanlon moves to reconsider Article 4B1. And as we scroll through the precincts, uh, let's bring in Mr. Hanlon. Uh, Mr. Hanlon, uh, again, you've already told us that you voted on the prevailing side, which was a no, and you voted no. And so now, is there anything else you'd like to say in favor of your motion to reconsider? Uh, this motion is a procedural motion. It is debatable. It is a majority vote. Uh, a yes vote and a majority would bring uh, back on uh, to our table the main motion uh, to reconsider, and town meeting would vote no, 
then we would move on to the next article. Mr. Hanlon, unmute yourself. Do you care to be heard? Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Moderator. I, I need to clarify uh, the, the issue of voting on the prevailing side. A motion was made to amend the main motion at $300,000. I voted no, which was the prevailing side. But then why did then, you vote on the main motion? Once I voted yes on the main motion and that failed, so. All right, your motion to reconsider is denied. Thank you. Thank you did you. not vote on the prevailing side. Uh, we're now Got gonna it. move back uh, in the warrant to Article 22. Uh, Article 22, Mr. Canty moves the town vote to authorize the select board to petition the general court for special legislation as follows. Section one, notwithstanding section 58A of chapter 31 of the general laws or any other general or special law to the contrary, no person shall be eligible to have his or her name certified for original appointment to the position of police officer in the town of Plymouth if such person has reached his 40th birthday on the date of the entrance examination. Section two, this act shall take effect upon its passage and to authorize the general court to make clerical or editorial changes of form only to any bill so filed unless approved in advance by the select board and to authorize the select board to approve such revisions as fall within the public purpose of this vote's majority vote. Mr. Canty. In a unanimous vote of 14 to 0 with no abstentions, the Advisory and Finance Committee recommends town meeting approve Article 22. Approval of this article will increase the minimum age for original appointment to the position of police officer in the town of Plymouth to age 40. Thank you. And we now have a motion to amend. I apologize to town meeting. I did not receive the motion to amend until uh, this morning during the morning session. Uh, William Arienti uh, moves to insert uh, the word 35th uh, in place of the word 40th birthday in section one of the proposed special legislation. Uh, Mr. Arienti, uh, if you wish to be heard on your motion uh, to amend, let's bring in William Arienti. Uh, he is uh, making a motion to amend. Uh, it would be a majority vote on the motion to amend. It is debatable. Uh, William Arienti. Uh, on your motion. Welcome. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. The reason I bring this uh, amendment to um, to town meeting is because I had heard this uh, last week where, during the presentation where um, I asked uh, the town uh, manager if um, this is also susceptible to the provisions in Mass General Law that allows anyone who was in the armed services to uh, defer four years of their age when taking the test uh, or when getting on the job. This would now make it, turn it from 40, the age of 40 to getting on the job to the age of 44 when they take the test. And then it's two years after that, which becomes the, uh, up to the age of 46 when they were able to get on the job. Um, I believe that if we were to uh, amend it and make it 35, that would allow the additional four years to work in the spirit of the original um, uh, agenda item and uh, would be best for the town. Uh, since the fact that once you get on at age 45 or 46, you're only eligible for a, a very, very small pension um, unless you go out on a disability, which is a whole other factor of the, of the issue. So I, I would recommend that we um, vote yes on the amendment, and that will also give the, uh, the age of 40 to the, um, the hiring. Thank you. That's uh, William Arienti, uh, Precinct 6, on a motion to amend, as we've done in the past. We will now debate the motion to amend and the main motion. Uh, we're going to begin with uh, Dana Flynn. He is acting uh, police chief. Uh, for the town of Plymouth. And uh, Dana Flynn, uh, any further comments on the main motion or on the motion to amend? Uh, Acting Chief Flynn. Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator. Good afternoon, everybody. 
Uh, my name is Dana Flynn, Acting Police Chief. Uh, I would recommend a request that the town, town meeting members uh, do not vote, vote in favor of this motion to amend. Uh, the purpose of this, <clears throat> this article is to increase my number of potential candidates for police office positions. Uh, I'm currently going through the uh, hiring process. When I call for the list from civil service, I received a list of 43 Plymouth residents who are interested in being a police officer. Out of the 43 names, 27 uh, signed the list. And out of the 27 who signed my list, only 17 completed the application process and are going now going through the um, interview process. I would like to add that out of the, those 43 names that I received, eight, eight of them were veterans. Only three of those veterans signed the list. One of them withdrew. One had a residency issue, so we had to bypass them and one of them did not complete the application process. Um, it is just clearly my intent from this article just to include, increase my pool of candidates so we can better serve the town. And if I could just wet, add one more other thing, uh, we have hired just uh, several years ago, actually when I was hired, there was no age limit. Um, we have hired officers in the past that were nearing 50 years old they met all the physical requirements, psychological requirements to get on the job. And they they took their pensions, whatever that was available to them when they left without without any qualms. Thank you. Thank you. And that is Dana Flynn. He is the acting chief of police for the town of Plymouth. We're going to go to Precinct 4, David Peck, point of order. Uh, Mr. Peck, if you can come in and uh, let us know your point of order. Um, David Peck is a town meeting member. Uh, we're debating Article 22, and uh, David Peck has uh, logged on to the V Voter. Mr. Peck, welcome again. Go ahead. David, unmute yourself. <clears throat> yeah, okay, th thank you very much. Yeah, I just wanted to ask, uh, in light of uh, Michael Hanlon's, and I I've heard just during uh, free time, uh, some potential interest in reopening discussion on uh, 4B1, uh, but the motion had come from someone who wanted to change you know, the vote or reconsider the amendment vote. Yeah, Mr. Peck, would I will lead, come back to lead, you. To, lead to the full vote. I'll come back to you after Article 22, thank you. Uh, okay. Now, uh, on this particular article, uh, I have a motion to close debate from Francis O'Brien. I'm not seeing any speakers on the queue, but I am seeing uh, Mark Pulisinelli, who previously was in the queue and he's on the screen. Uh, Mr. Pulisinelli, are you someone who wants to speak on Article 22? Uh, thank you, Mr. Moderator, but um, I had a question, but uh, Mr. Arenti in his statement actually answered my question, thank so you. I went ahead and canceled my request. Thank you very request. much. Then I'm not gonna take Mr. O'Brien's motion since we have nobody in the queue. And so uh, we're going to now go to the vote on Article 22. Article, Article 22 on the motion to amend. Uh, that's the first vote. So it is Mr. Arienti's motion to amend. And you'll see that's what it is on the screen. We have 30 seconds. And we're going to count down now. You can vote on the motion to amend. It is whether to change. Uh, Mr. Arienti wants to change 40th. To 35th. So it is a motion to amend. It is a majority vote. Uh, following that, we'll continue the debate uh, if we have additional speakers. Uh, we're down to uh, nine seconds. Uh, town meeting members are becoming uh, quite able on the voting uh, with the V Voter platform. The voting has ended. Uh, the polls have closed. We're now going to take the vote, and uh, the results are as follows. Uh, town meeting has voted 12 yes, 99 no, zero abstentions. It does not pass. We're now going back to the main motion. It has not been amended. And as we scroll through the precincts, uh, we're going to be looking afterwards to vote on the main motion since I have no speakers in the queue. After that, I will go to a point of order uh, to Mr. Peck, but in preparation for that, I will let you know that it is not appropriate for anyone to move to reconsider a motion to amend 
unless we first reconsider the main motion. And so on any article in town meeting, you will have to have voted on the prevailing side of the main motion in order to get back into the debate on the main motion if you then want to further debate a motion to amend. So uh, just the town meeting is aware of that uh, as we uh, continue on this. We've scrolled through the precincts and uh, we are now going to vote on the main motion under Article 2 since we have no other speakers. And so if we can show up that graphic, there it is. And uh, we have 30 seconds. When the timer moves, you can vote now. You're now voting on the main motion to Article 22. It's a majority vote. Uh, we will continue uh, with town meeting following this uh, vote, and we will, uh, I will recognize uh, Precinct 4 David Peck. So let's bring him in uh, now so he'll be ready uh, once we complete the voting uh, on Article 22. Article 22 is a majority vote. Town meeting has completed the voting. The polls have closed. We're going to look for the results. 106 yes, 4 no, 0 abstentions. It passes. We're going to scroll through the precincts. Mr. Peck, uh, go ahead on your point of order. Unmute yourself. And you can speak to town meeting. Uh, unmute yourself, Mr. Peck. We can't hear you. You need to unmute yourself. There, thank you. Oh, you're muted again. Oh. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> you're muted again. Okay, there. There you yeah. are. Uh, it, you, you you just answered the question. So that for reconsidering, you just it, the main motion needs to be reconsidered, not not someone who voted a certain way, the prevailing way on an amendment. That is correct. Thank you. Okay. So thank you for thank you for that clarification. Sure. Article I'm still 23. hoping. Uh, someone comes in and, and does uh, ask for a reconsideration. Thank you. Article 23, Mr. Kenny moves the town vote to accept the provisions of general laws, uh, chapter 40, section 8E, which provides for a youth commission. It's a majority vote. Mr. Canty. In a unanimous vote of 12 to zero with no abstentions, the advisory and finance committee recommends town meeting approve article 23. Approval of this article will provide an opportunity for the youth of the community to get involved in town government and give them a channel through which to advocate for themselves and the issues important to their demographic in our community. Precinct 3, Donna Curtin has a point of order, followed by Precinct 8, James Grillo. We're going to begin with Donna Curtin, then we'll bring in also James Grillo. Uh, to speak on Article 23. Uh, this is uh, coming to you live on October 6th. Uh, welcome, Donna Curtin. We can see you. You can unmute yourself and you can begin speaking. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Moderator. I, I hope I uh, chose the right button here. This concerns David Peck's questions about 4B1. Would this be a, an appropriate time for me to say I would be willing to bring up the point of reconsideration having voted on the pre prevailing side of the main motion in order for the amendment to be reconsidered? Excellent. Okay, we'll take that right up after Article 23. Thank you for that. Let's go to James Grillo, Precinct 8. Mr. Grillo on Article 23. Uh, thank you. As probably one of the youngest people here on the Zoom, uh, I'm actually 19. When I was 16, I was appointed to my first town committee. Uh, I eventually became chairman of that committee. When I was 18, it was the Cedarville Steering Committee. And I was also an alternate in the Historic District Commission. So I think this is passed overdue. I just want to commend uh, whoever helped write up this uh, amendment. Um, I think it's time that we started hearing back from younger voices. And I think more people should be involved. And I'm happy that there's now a medium, or there will be hopefully now a medium for youth to be able to do that. So thank you. Thank you. Precinct 8, James Grillo, the fourth. Uh, and now, uh, any further discussion on Article 23? Uh, if not, we're going to go to the vote. Uh, this is a majority vote on Article 23. Uh, and town meeting members, you can see the graphic. The timer has begun. And once it moves, you can vote now. You're voting on Article 23. It's a majority vote. Uh, thereafter, we're going to call and bring back in Precinct 3, Town meeting member Donna Curtin. So if we can bring her in as we vote on Article 23, uh, we'll be taking up the motion 
to reconsider Article B41. So the voting continues on Article 23. It's a majority vote, and town meeting members are voting. The voting has concluded. Uh, the results, 104 yes, 3 no, 0 abstentions. It passes, and we're now going back to a motion to consider, reconsider Article 4B1. Uh, Donna Curtin, you've advised that you voted on the prevailing side on the main motion. Do you care to be heard further on your motion to reconsider? Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Donna Curtin, Precinct 3. Um, uh, given the importance and the level of community engagement on this particular article, um, my purpose in bringing this forward is to have an opportunity for the amendment to be reconsidered. I did not vote on the prevailing side on the amendment, but I did vote on the prevailing side on the main motion and therefore uh, would um, request that that be brought up for reconsideration so that the debate can continue on the amendment. And you voted no on the main motion. Yes. Which was the prevailing side. That's Thank correct. You. Thank you. Does anyone else care to be heard in the debate on the motion to reconsider Article 4B1 before we take the vote on Article 4B1? Uh, Precinct 5, Patricia McCarthy. Uh, if we can bring her in, uh, she wants to speak on a motion uh, to reconsider. This is debatable, and it's going to be a majority vote. When we take it up, we're going to welcome Precinct 5 Town Meeting Member Patricia McCarthy on a motion to reconsider Article 4B1. Uh, this is coming to you live on Saturday, October 16. Uh, we have just completed about eight hours of town meeting as we move into our ninth hour. Uh, Patricia McCarthy, unmute yourself, and then you'll be able to begin speaking. Uh, good afternoon. Patricia McCarthy. I have a question. Um, this reconsideration assumes that an amendment will be filed, or how does that work, Steve? Does it include, uh, it only is a reconsideration of the main motion? That is so, true. It is only a so reconsideration how, okay, of how, the main motion. And if there is a majority vote in favor of reconsidering I will then certainly entertain any appropriate motions to amend the main motion, but at this point, we're only reconsidering the main motion. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We're now going to go to Precinct 10, Robert Duggan. We don't have to bring him in, but he moves to close debate. It is a motion to close debate on the motion to reconsider. So we're first going to vote on whether to close debate on the motion to reconsider, We'll show the queue. We have two people wanting to speak on the motion to reconsider. Precinct 4, Virginia Davis. Precinct 12, Lawrence Delafield. We're now going to vote on whether to close debate on the motion to reconsider Article 4B1. Uh, a motion to close debate will require a two-thirds vote. You will see the graphic momentarily on closing debate. There it is. The timer, 30 seconds. You can begin voting now. You're voting on whether to close debate on a motion to reconsider Article 4B1. And so town meeting members are deciding uh, on several layers, procedural layers, how they want to proceed with town meeting. They're first uh, deciding whether to close debate on a procedural motion as to whether to reconsider a main motion under Article 4B1. And so the voting has ended. And now we're going to see the results. Yes, 86 say close debate, 24 say no, zero abstentions. We're now done debating the motion to reconsider, which was a debatable procedural motion. And so now we're going to go and take the vote on the procedural motion to close debate. We're scrolling through the precincts on the motion to close debate, and we have the final precincts, one, two, and three, and so now we can go to the motion to reconsider Article 4B1, another procedural motion layered on the one that we just did. This is a motion to reconsider Article 4B1, the main motion. There's the graphic to reconsider. The timer is for 30 seconds, you can vote when it begins now. 
You're now voting on whether to reconsider Article 4B1. It is a majority vote on whether to reconsider Article 4B1. And town meeting members have the opportunity throughout town meeting to not only vote on the main substantive motions, but to also bring motions to amend, as well as multiple procedural motions, as we've just seen uh, by town meeting. The voting has ended. We're now going to see the results. 40 say reconsider, 75 say no, one abstention. It fails. We will scroll through the precincts, and as we do, I'm going to read into the record the next article. Article 24 is withdrawn. Article 25, Mr. Canty moves the town vote to amend the Town of Plymouth general bylaws by deleting in its entirety sections 51-2, indecent language in section 51-3, indecent marks to facing property. It's a majority vote. We've scrolled through the precincts on the last motion. So, Mr. Canty, on your motion. In a vote of 13 to 1 with no abstentions, the Advisory and Finance Committee recommends town meeting approve Article 25. Approval of this article will amend the Town of Plymouth general bylaws consistent with the recommendations of town council by deleting sections dealing with indecent language and indecent marks. These sections are outdated, vague, and essentially unenforceable as written, and, but retaining them may open the town up to costly legal challenges nonetheless. However, state law that currently exists will still provide protection against and enforceable penalties for the misconduct intended to be outlined in these sections that are targeted for deletion. Thank you. And uh, we have no speakers. We're going to go right to the voting on Article 25. And it is a majority vote. And when we see the graphic for the voting, uh, we'll get ready to vote on Article 25. There it is. The timer is appeared. And we're going to start voting now. You're voting on Article 25. It's a majority vote. And we're going to then continue uh, with the warrant uh, after this vote. Uh, town meeting members are using the V Voter platform. They've used uh, throughout the day. We're into our ninth hour of the fall uh, annual town meeting for 2021. Uh, town meeting members have moved uh, this afternoon fairly quickly uh, through the warrant. They're completing the voting on Article 25. The poll closed. We're now going to see the results. 112 yes, 0 no, 2 abstentions. It carries. And as we scroll through the precincts, I'll tell you that Article 26 has been withdrawn. We therefore read into the record Article 27. Mr. Canty moves the town vote to accept the provisions of General Laws Chapter 48L, Municipal Agricultural Commission, as it applies to the expansion of duties and responsibilities of the Plymouth Agricultural Committee. It's a majority vote, and uh, we've gone through all the precincts. So, Mr. Canty, on your motion. In a vote of 12 to 2 to 0, the Advisory and Finance Committee recommends town meeting approve Article 27. Approval of this article will adopt the provisions of Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 40, Section 8L, and transition the Plymouth Agricultural Committee to an agricultural commission for the purposes of promoting, developing, and monitoring the agricultural resources of the town. Uh, there are speakers uh, wishing to be heard. Uh, we'll begin with Precinct 5, Michael Withington, to be followed by Precinct 15, Kevin Joyce. We'll bring in Michael Withington. Michael Withington, good afternoon. Good afternoon. Thank you very much, and I appreciate everyone's patience and hard work. I know it's on the ninth hour. Uh, I just had a couple of questions. Uh, first of all, I voted in favor of uh, article on Article 23 and uh, in favor of uh, youth involvement in government. I think that's fantastic. It wasn't recorded, but my question is to Article uh, 27, um, the Agricultural Commission, 
does this uh, is this any type of farming? Does this include aquaculture, which we have a robust uh, uh, enterprise in that uh, arena, or does it not include ac aquaculture? That's one question. And what is the cost? Would be my, my other question of uh, taking it from a committee to a commission. And third is, are there any measurables for this? Thank you. Uh, we'll begin with uh, Patrick Farah. He is a planning technician uh, for the town of Plymouth. Uh, Mr. Farah, if you want to try to answer any of the questions uh, from Mr. Withington. Good afternoon. Oh, thank you, Mr. Moderator, and thank you, town meeting. Uh, for the record, my name is Patrick Farah. I'm a member of the Plymouth Agricultural Committee. I'm here also with Richard Vaca, also a member of the committee. And I think between both of us, we could probably answer the questions. With regard to Mr. Withington's uh, concern about aquaculture, uh, the commission would look at uh, aiding and helping uh, all agricultural practices, um, including uh, aquaculture and if, uh, as a support system, um, as well as advocating for any type of uh, innovative farming uh, or all farming methods. Uh, Rich, if you want to uh, address the the other questions. Yes, yeah, so through me, Mr. Good afternoon, uh, everyone. Uh, uh, Richard Vaca is uh, here for town meeting, uh, further responding. If we can bring in Richard Vaca. Good afternoon, Mr. Vaca. Thank you, Mr. Moderator. Uh, my name is Rich Vaca. I am also a member of the Plymouth Agricultural Committee. Um, and Mr. Withington, what was your second question? Is there a cost associated with this, the, the difference between taking it from a committee to a commission? Uh, and uh, the other question is, wh what are the measurables? How do you measure that your, your commission is going to be successful? What are you, I know I see your, uh, your explanations on the goals, but uh, what, how would you measure a success in this uh, program, and that's kind of a general question, but uh, I'm sure you can answer it. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, answer to your first question is no, there's no cost associated with this at all. Um, and as far as uh, measurable successes, um, I think that if you look at the provisions of Section 8L, uh, it talks about uh, outreach, it talks about uh, getting grants, it talks about advancing uh, agricultural interests. Um, and, and at this particular stage, uh, success on any of those measures um, would be a positive thing. Thank you very much, uh, Patrick and Richard. I greatly appreciate your efforts. Uh, I will say that I did vote on the prevailing side for the youth to be involved in politics. I'd also like them to be involved in farming because us old white-haired guys don't do a great job at it. So uh, uh, thank you. Very thank much. You. Appreciate all your efforts and energy. Thank you. Precinct 5, you. Michael Withington. Thank Precinct 15, Kevin Joyce. Uh, let's bring in Kevin Joyce at this time uh, as we debate Article 27 uh, on our warrant. Uh, Kevin Joyce is in Precinct 15. Uh, this is coming to you live on Saturday, October 16. Uh, we are now uh, well into our ninth hour. Uh, we'll continue through the warrant. And Kevin Joyce, I see thank you. Thank you, Steve. Go ahead. Yep, uh, thank you very much. And uh, Kevin, all I wanted to know was, there seemed to be two people who were opposed to this. And I wondered if you could, could reveal to the group what the FinCom decision on those two people, what their theory or thoughts were, why they voted against this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, question to Kevin Canty. Uh, Kevin, if you wish to respond, uh, you can. Uh, so you can let us know uh, whether uh, the question from Kevin Joyce uh, is one uh, that you would uh, answer on behalf uh, of the Advisory and Finance Committee. Uh, this is Plymouth uh, Fall Annual Town Meeting. It's coming to you live. Kevin Canty. Yes. Uh, so the two members of the Advisory and Finance Committee that voted uh, against were uh, our member Gail Butler, who is our second vice chair, as well as member Joseph Lally. Mr. Lally 
uh, stated that he thinks that they can still operate as a committee and does not at this time support uh, the transition to a commission because he thinks they can still do what they want to do as they are currently situated. Uh, Ms. Butler said that she felt she needed more information and therefore voted no because she didn't feel she had enough information to vote yes at the time of the vote. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. At this point, there are no other speakers in the queue. We're going to go to the vote under Article 27. When it comes up, you'll see the graphic. Uh, the timer will be for 30 seconds. We have it. And it will begin voting now. You're voting on Article 27. Uh, following Article 27, we'll move to Article 28. We're coming to you live on Saturday, October 16. We plan uh, to complete a town meeting. And uh, at the time we complete it, there'll be a motion to dissolve a town meeting, uh, which would end town meeting. We do not contemplate an adjourned session on Monday night. The voting has ended on Article 27. Well, now the poll is closed. The results are coming in. 91 yes, 11 no, three abstentions. It carries. While we scroll through the precincts, I will read into the record Article 28. Article 28, Mr. Canty moves the town vote to transfer the care, custody, management, and control of the parcels listed below as on file with the town clerk from the town treasurer for tax title purposes to the Conservation Commission for conservation purposes pursuant to General Laws Chapter 40, Section 8C, and further to authorize the Conservation Commission execute any and all instruments as may be necessary to effectuate the vote taken hereunder or take any other action relative thereto. We scroll through all the precincts. Mr. Canty, on your vote, of the Advisory and Finance Committee. It's a two-thirds vote for town meeting. In a unanimous vote of 14 to zero with no abstentions, the Advisory and Finance Committee recommends town meeting approve Article 28. Approval of this article will transfer the listed parcels from the town treasurer to the Conservation Commission for protection under Article 97 of the Massachusetts State Constitution. Both parcels were taken by the town through a tax lien proceeding in the mid-1990s. The parcels comprise approximately five acres of unbuildable land off of Center Hill Road. Any further discussion? No one in the queue. It's a two-thirds vote. We're going to go to the vote uh, for town meeting. And uh, once you see the graphic, uh, come up on your screen for Article 28. Again, a two-thirds vote uh, from town meeting. There's the graphic. There's the timer. When it begins, you can vote, and voting will start now. You're voting on Article 28. Town meeting has been uh, begun at 8 a.m. this morning. Uh, this is the last uh, substantive motion uh, to be coming before us today, absence any procedural motions. Town meeting uh, has continued uh, throughout the day uh, with the warrant. And so uh, we're going to complete the vote on Article 28. The voting has ended. We'll now, with the polls closed, we'll see what the vote is. Uh, 112, yes. Two, no. One, abstention. And as we scroll through the precincts, I will read uh, into the record, we've already uh, taken Article 29 out of order. Article 30, I have no motion. Hearing no motion, I declare no action. And uh, while we're scrolling through the precincts, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank uh, Assistant Town Moderator Nicole Manfredi uh, for all of her hard work uh, with the training and the planning uh, for this uh, virtual town meeting. Uh, Julie Thompson, the Executive Director and Floor Director today at PAC TV, and all of her staff, uh, Mark Feet of OTI Technologies and his staff, Town Council Mark Rich, uh, the Town Clerk has been very involved, Perseus, all of the officials for the town of Plymouth, the town boards and committees, and of course, all of you, the town meeting members. And at this point, Mr. Canty moves to dissolve the fall annual 2021 town meeting. Mr. Canty, do you care to be heard one last time? Uh, no, Mr. Moderator, I believe this one speaks for itself as well. Thank you very much. 
Uh, and if there's no debate, uh, we'll call up the graphic. We need to still vote to dissolve. Uh, and so we're going to take that vote. Uh, one last vote, and there it is, showing up on the screen. The timer is there. We're going to begin voting now. Town meeting is voting to dissolve town meeting. This would end, uh, if it is successful, end any further action for the 2021 fall annual town meeting, which came to you live on Saturday, October uh, 16, 2021. Uh, I'm Steve Trifletti, Plymouth Town Moderator. I want to thank everybody for your attention and for your attendance. Uh, and now we're going to go to the vote. And it is, says the motion to adjourn, but it's a motion to dissolve. And it is 108 in favor. One person does not want to dissolve town meeting. And we have zero abstentions. So it carries. And I declare that once we go through all the precincts and scroll through to make sure all the votes are properly recorded, we will then dissolve the 2021 fall annual town meeting. We've now completed all the precincts, and so I'm going to move to dissolve at 4.22 p.m. Thank you.